Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting April 3rd, 2019 at 6 p.m. at the Deerfield Municipal Offices here in South Deerfield. Uh, we start our meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you all please rise? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, just let everyone know that this meeting is being recorded. Uh, first item on our agenda is, do we have any minutes to approve? No. no. Okay. Uh, we have a, a hearing scheduled with the folks from UMass uh, Sod Farm. You, uh, Joe, you yeah. would like to come up and welcome. Talk to you. Thank How you. How are you? Glad to Joe, see you welcome. all again. Good to see you too. Thanks for Before coming Before you back. start, I just want to say thank you so much for working with Dick and I for the last couple of weeks. Sure, my pleasure. I just want you to know I really appreciate it. Great. It's been a good, a good, a good working discussion. Um, I've provided you with, a, uh, I think, three documents. Yes. Um, I'm going to make a presentation of stuff you don't have. That's okay. really the, the meat of the response. But I'm also going to read, I think, the mitigation sheet that you do have. Okay. And the other, the other uh, two things I won't, but you know they're for yep. your reference. So, sure, thank you. Um, so thanks for this opportunity. Um, we take your concerns and the concerns of the neighbors very seriously, and we want to ameliorate, ameliorate those concerns to the best of our ability. Um, I'd also like to mention that we would have been here two weeks ago had we been notified yep. about the meeting. So I, no, thank I, you I for coming. wish we had been. Yep. Um, I'm sorry, it was a misunderstanding. Understood. Yeah. We, we Understood. Understood. left, you know, with the discussion of March 20th. So right. I'm right. sorry there was a misunderstanding yes, on that. indeed. Me too. Um, so as a follow-up to the last time we were here, we want to help provide some transparency about our activities and our goals at the Turf Research Center. Um, while we understand that the use of pesticides can be concerning, especially to the abutting neighbors, we want you all and the neighbors to understand that we follow strict guidelines set forth by both the federal EPA and the Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources, or MDAR. Um, and also, we want you to understand that the use of pesticides is an important component of what we do there. So it's not something we can simply right. easily dismiss. Mm -hmm. um, pesticides used at the Turf Research Center um, when they are used, are based on the tenets of, the integ of integrated pest management, or IPM. Um, IPM is a systematic approach used with many crops, many agricultural crops. It involves the use of sound, sound cultural practices and non-chemical management strategies first, um, whenever possible, and then followed by the use of pesticides only when um, nothing else will get the result that's needed. Um, at the Turf Research Center, pesticides are used based on determined pest population thresholds when the presence of a pest would be detrimental to the integrity of one or more research efforts. They count them, <laughs> you know, sure. and there's, there are literal thresholds for different kinds of research being done. Um, pesticides may also be used sometimes as parts of studies designed to evaluate their effectiveness on specific pests or to determine means of preventing and mitigating movement of pesticides and other materials into the environment. Um, we employ, always uh, employ best management practices, or BMPs, that are intended to prevent the movement of pesticides off the site. Our use of BMPs takes into consideration the environmental impacts to pesticide movement, such as wind speed, wind direction, precipitation. Mm -hmm. Steps are already employed to limit our pesticide applications to optimal weather conditions and are employed in conjunction with the use of equipment and application techniques that reduce drift potential. These include the use of low pressure sprayers and close proximity of nozzles to the ground to eliminate unintended movement of pesticides from the turf. Whenever possible, we apply pesticides early in the morning when wind speeds are typically lower. The select board requested that we apply pesticides only during specific conditions, such as limited wind speeds of three to five miles an hour, early in the morning to reduce drift potential, 
and only during times of reduced neighbor outdoor activity. While these are understandable requests, please understand that due to the nature of the work, we can't limit all applications to a specific time of day on a regular basis. While the timing of applications varies, applications are only made when off-site movement is least likely to occur, as established in the PMPs followed at the facility. We don't foresee changes in our research activity and our use of pesticides at the facility. If individuals are concerned about a, a particular application, whether they be you or neighbors, they should contact the facility and or MDAR whenever the drift or offsite movement of a product may be suspected because they're the, they're the, the ones who need to know. Mm -hmm. um, now, about notification. Our neighbors voiced their concerns about understanding which pesticides are being used and requested to be notified when these materials are to be applied. The select board suggested specific notification systems to use. While we take our neighbors' concerns and your recommendations seriously, we are limited in what we are able to provide in terms of notification of facility activities. Many responses to pests at the facility are curative in nature and therefore cannot be planned far in advance. We will, however, begin a system of notifying the neighbors, and I'll get into that more in a few minutes. Um, please understand that we follow the regulations that have been set forth by MDAR for all pesticide applications in the state. In preparation for this meeting, we asked some specific questions of MDAR and um, have provided those questions and answers to you, mm -hmm. um, clarifying our facilities classification and notification requirements. To be clear, notification of butters is not required by MDAR, However, we are committed to providing this common courtesy to the best of our ability as a member of your community. Thank you. Um, concerns about the site. Um, the select board, you and neighbors, raised concerns about our site in regards to specific considerations. These included fire department awareness of chemicals on the site, storage and containment concerns, floodplain and water table considerations, drinking water source proximity, drainage to the Connecticut River, and maintenance of the property fence. We have contacted the fire department to confirm their awareness of our on-site chemical storage, communicating any information or changes that need to be made. We've had MDAR audit our storage facility and confirm, confirm that it provides ample containment in case of a spill or accident. According to the Mass DEP protection map, our site is not located above any nearby drinking water supply. As mentioned earlier, our facility follows stringent protocols and BMPs to ensure off-site movements of products is limited to the greatest extent possible. In fact, one of our research goals is to establish practices to ensure off-target movement of applied products doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, additional concerns were raised regarding the integrity of the fence surrounding the property. While maintenance of the fence is part of our general practices, we will make inspecting and repairing it a priority this spring. Thank you for your time and consideration about all of this. We take your comments and concerns very seriously. Our goal is to be an upstanding neighbor and provide transparency to our facility's practices. To do so, we want to invite you and any interested neighbors to an open house on Tuesday, May 28th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. to see what we do and ask questions. And we really encourage anybody interested to come. It'd be a good opportunity to see the place and understand what's happening there. Um, so further information about the research, uh, the, the, the facility and our turf program can be found on our website, which is, you can find through ag.umass.edu. That's that statement. Okay. Now, the mitigation specific ones that we propose, mm -hmm. the first is border plantings, that we will plant a barrier of trees wherever there isn't one along the border with the abutting neighbors. Um, evergreens, hopefully fast growing ones that will fill in nicely. Um, and second, we will institute a notification system. We'll institute a system of zones along the property line with the abutters. Um, in the first 25 to 50 feet, depending on where you are along the border, we already don't do any spraying and we'll continue that. In the following 50 to 75 feet, meaning creating a total of 100 feet from the property line, that 
we will, we'll, we're going to call that the notification zone, that 100 feet. Um, in the event that pesticides are to be sprayed in that zone, we will notify the public by placing a brightly colored notice in the sign box to be erected at the road entrance as much prior to the application as we can. In some cases, that will be several days. It is likely that in other cases, notice could be given only within a few hours or even within a half an hour of the spring. Half an hour before the application is to begin, we will place a tall visible flag uh, in the area where the application is to begin. And it will be left there until after the application is completed. Um, I also mentioned that that's in the notification zone, that for any application of pesticides anywhere on the site, there are small yellow signs that are, that are always placed at the entrance to the driveway. So whether it's in that notification zone or all the way on the other side, mm -hmm. that's, okay. that will be there too. Okay. Um, we, we're gonna put up a signpost with a closed box for posting information at the, road, at the roadside entrance. It'll have general information, contact information, and importantly, the notification of pesticide spraying to be done um, within the notification zone. And it'll be left in the box until 24 hours after the application in question. And the thought was to put in a nice bright color so if you're driving by, you can see it. You can tell there's something there. And if you want to stop and read it, you stop and read it. Okay. Um, Quick question on that. Yeah. Would you, is that um, something that you would, you know, the sign you would put there, would you put what you're spraying or not? Um, probably not. We will probably simply have both the contact information and when and where it's going to be sprayed. And if someone's curious, they can always call James at the facility mm -hmm. first or Bob or myself at UMass, and we'll be happy to give more information. Um, so uh, I mentioned the open house. And uh, last is that we want to emphasize that we are, we really welcome questions and we're really ready to, to take them. Um, James is probably the first person to call because he knows the most. The rest of us um, will probably say, hey, wait a minute, I have to call James if you call us. But nevertheless, um, you're welcome to call so, us as so well. So when you have uh, put, when you build this box and put out the notice for notification to the neighborhood, that you're doing that zone. Yeah. Um, if people have questions, they could call James. Absolutely. Right? And if yeah, they don't okay. reach him, they call one of the next numbers. Okay. And they'll all be up there in that box. Okay. Yeah. And if they're upset about something, they can call MDAR. And that's okay. the appropriate the appropriate thing to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the flag is going to go into the plot that you're actually spraying that's right. at that point. That's right. In the notification. That's zone. right. Okay. The thinking being also that, you know, it may be at the far back end. And someone at the front may not be concerned about that if they know that's actually where it is. Right. So mm -hmm. it'll give them a sense of where it's actually happening as well. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, I know we've I had have a, multiple yeah. conversations, so. Go ahead, sorry. No, I was going to say, uh, this might seem a bit off the wall, but, you know, um, I know that, or I assume that a lot of chemicals that are used in this type of application. Some are more hazardous than others. Um, I guess where I'm going with this is that in a lot of elementary schools, they don't even allow people to bring peanut butter there right. because right. certain kids have such right. bad allergies to right. it. And that although I understand that we live in a world that we don't care about this guy and this guy, it's a group of us that benefit from something. Um, I was wondering why UMass wouldn't maybe now start to consider moving all of that spraying to a place near the Hadley Farm where there's, you know, there's probably 20 times more distance between any residential areas and where you'd have the application instead of just a few hundred feet from there. The Hadley Farm is a very different kind of facility. Um, it's right. a livestock and equine facility. It's sheep, horses, right. you know, it's... it's um, not, not really suited for this kind of research. I mean, the kind of research that's been done here has been done on plots that have been worked on for 40 years, and um, it's not something we've thought about. I can bring the question back, but I suspect that um, the folks who use the Hadley Farm aren't going to be yeah. 
They might not want the chemicals near that. their horses. Well, they sheep. probably won't want that, and they probably won't want to give up the space, too. Well, I, I know, but the only reason I suggest that is because I've, I've been here all my life, and that's a huge parcel of land. And, and you could, for the size of what you have over there, that those fields could be relocated to the north side of that property, and you'd still be more, well over 1,000 feet from the barns and stuff. So. The north side of the existing River Road property? No, the no. north side of the Hadley Farm, th that one location. Right. You know. it, it looks like a large site, but it is actually all used. Um, I, well, it, I was just yeah. wondering. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Do you have any questions? Um, I, the only, my, my main question was that you know, if you were posting the things, w would you post what you were spraying? And I don't know what the um, complication is of, of that. Is it just too many things? I thought maybe if you'd use them. I know I saw the list of items that you do right. use, and I wondered if there was a... Well, we're just trying to keep it simple. Uh, I agree. I agree. And that's why I was thinking, like, if you were going to spray, um, you know, and if there were... I don't know how, I'm trying to think of the number of things. There might be 20 things if you had just a specific card for each one, you just dropped it in so you knew what it was, but I don't, that was just we a had, thought. We had money, talked but. about putting up a link on our website that people could go to to look for um, up. Information. Is, yeah, look up the information. Well, um, you have this information from mm -hmm. us. You can use this that way. Right, as a link. You, and you also have links to the SDS sheets, though mm -hmm. they're probably not as useful as looking at the um, labels right. from the pesticides themselves. Right. Because that actually gives you more information, practical information, than um, the SDS Dick, sheets. Dick, I was wondering if you could come up here and, and um, just we could talk about how we would set it up. Um, so that the link would be there for people to see, um, to use. What, how would you want this to work? I want to repeat that for me. Um, I was wondering, um, how do you want to set up the link on our web page, our website? Well, it should be done on the Deerfield Town website, and these guys should have right. access to under it. under the Board of Health. Yeah, absolutely. And then have it... Um, the it's under chemical departments. Mm -hmm. under the website, go to the department. Uh, Anybody searching for information on what's going on in town could have a link. I don't to think it. we should have to go to a UMass website. No, they, no, they, no, they, no, exactly. No, 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 we no. could just go link well, the information just, they I'm, gave us. I'm wondering right how it. you would suggest, from a user's point of view, how you would want them right, to set right it up. On the, right on the uh, website where Board it says of departments. Board just of go to the Board of Health Department. That's it. List and you'd everything. have a link for the turf it, farm, yeah. and people could yeah. could see what yeah. you could might take be. that document and exactly use hyperlink it, or you, or you could, could download it right onto our website. Okay. Right. Exactly. I just, I just want to make sure it's user friendly. Mm. For yeah, yeah. The, I think it well, is. I, I don't want to add to somebody's work burden, but UMass could forward it to the, the selectman's officer, Pat. She could put it on the website. Yeah, I think, that, and we, we have it. Yeah. yeah. So, so we can load all that. That's just simple. That's simple. That's pretty simple. And just that to point out a little bit of information, the, the history before UMass even got there, that site from the bridge to a mile and a half up was Temec EDP pesticide contaminated from potato farmers. Okay. Yeah. So it's been, interesting. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, and there are no private wells. There are no anything like that. I've done the well survey for the whole town. There are no private wells or private water supplies. Uh, we don't allow anybody as a Board of Health to put in a shallow well. So there's no potential of anybody pumping anything up from any of the, the I don't want to use the word contaminants, but any, any of the stuff that's in the ground now. But, and there's a life, there's a half life on all that. There's, I've talked to these guys, uh, they're, they're on the up and up 100%. I got to give them credit for going so far. Mm -hmm. I just happen to be the abutter on the other side. <laughs> so. Um, so, again, I just want you to know I really appreciate you working with us all week on this, or the last couple yeah, of weeks, Joe. absolutely. Um, so the zones, um, when you set up the notification zones, you'll um, have that probably before the first spraying? Um, I hope so. We're going to, that sign thing has been ordered and is expected in any time. Great. So that has to go up. Yeah. Um, that's what has to go. Well, we can start using a flag. Yeah, we can mm -hmm. in the meantime do something um, because, you know,
with spring approaching, we are looking at making right. applications soon. soon. And I think it might be before that box is actually installed. Right, but at least we can start with the yeah. flag. With the flag, mm -hmm. or do something temporary out by the road in the absence of and, that. And again, I know you're a, a state entity, so you know you have to do everything through, um, yes. you know, the per, per, <laughs> per you know, the purchasing um, protocol. But um, so when do you think you would have the barrier barrier plantings up? That I can't say. We have to um, enter into some negotiations on when that gets done. But um, sometime in the next. Are we looking at the negotiator? <laughs> Well, this season, I mean, for sure, yeah. Okay. Um, it's a little hard for us right now because we haven't done our due diligence back home with the folks who have to do it, so. Okay. Um, so, um, when, James, when you start plant, uh, spraying this year, would you just, because we don't have the plantings done and we might not have the box up, would you be able to notify our office um, so that we could let the neighbors, at least some of the neighborhood, know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely in the beginning, uh, any applications that we make uh, are going to be planned in advance. Mm -hmm. We're not necessarily in that situation yet where we are looking at a curative situation. Right. Uh, obviously, depending on the weather, that can happen quickly, but certainly to start, we can definitely okay. give you uh, a warning. I, I, I think I would feel more comfortable if we had just like a transition period here, just mm -hmm. until everything is set up. Sure. And the neighbors feel comfortable. Sure. With what's happening. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, this would satisfy me as a neighbor. Um, it, does the neighborhood have any questions? Um, yep. Yes. Um, Come on, call there's a the mic there. You can just yeah. state your name and... Hi, I'm Maureen Bowler from 7 Beaver Drive. Thank you. Yes. Um, and one of my questions was, is could we get a copy of the list of chemicals? But apparently you guys, you, yes. that's been and provided we can post to you folks. Our, absolutely. And that's um, what yes. you're going to put on the website? Yep. Yep, we're going to have a link to that. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I think, Maureen, if you're out walking, you'll be able to notice if there was the box where they're going to place the box, you should be able to see it pretty well. I think. No, that's great. That's uh, and, great. And so what What I think, after working with Joe, Dick and I working with Joe for the last couple of weeks, I think what we'd like to do is see if this is works and see how this, you know, settles out for this year. And then if there's any issues, we can talk about it this coming winter again. Mm -hmm. and, um, Absolutely. Make any no, it's just the fact that phone <laughs> numbers will be readily accessible. Mm -hmm. I mean, anybody right. knows trying to call UMass and trying to right. get yeah, through to a no, person. No, you don't want to do that. Yes. We'll have, all, and, we'll have no. all that for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. and, um, I'm sorry, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting James. Um, yes. But he's not always around either. So sure. um, this, it's just good that we have access to those phone numbers, his contacts yep. as well. And, and we'd certainly be willing with, to work with you. Um, so ours is one of the absolute abutters. Uh -huh. um, so we'd be willing to work with you because we're in different situations. I know Hannah feels differently than I do sure. on certain things too. And, um, her space is more open right now, where ours, we've kind of years ago, and I forget the gentleman that ran the place forever before you uh, were there, Tom, Tom with his cigar. Um, <laughs> yes, um, we had talked with Tom, and he kind of let, in back of our lot, just go. We let it fill in with mm -hmm. brush and mm -hmm. everything else. So um, we'd, we'd, I'd love to talk with you or work with you on that. That'd be great. I'd appreciate that. Um, I have to say, I've never seen a yellow flag ever in 20 years that I can recall, so maybe I'm just not paying attention. I think that's but, new, right? Um, the flags are going to be a new process? The, the location where we're going to be using them is going to be new. Um, the but last I, couple of years yeah. since oh. I've been there, I actually do put a yellow flag. They're out. small, right? They're small. Yeah, like you'd see in somebody's yard yeah, when yeah. Mr. Weed comes right. around or I something, see. just so I that see you, you see something posted. Right. This I'll will look, be much I'll look much better. Uh, well, the, my the, impression the is flag that that's yes, this one's going to be the, different. The zone will be yeah, big. this one will be but different. Those, but I was those will be the state mandated yeah. yellow things. Yeah, yeah. So I'll state. keep a better lookout on those for now. Um, and I guess that's it for me for now. Just looking, okay, I I do like the idea of an open house. Yeah. Um, we are neighbors. Um, mm -hmm. You probably are well aware too that we also share 
the uh, drainage ditch that comes down through the property that feeds next to my property and underneath right. your right. land and yes. out into the river. So it's good that we have a good relationship yeah. um, for a number of reasons. Yeah. Thank well, you. Like Thank I said, I, I, I'm, I was very pleased that everybody seems to be working together and that we can adjust if you know as necessary yeah. as we go on and just one further comment I'm sorry, just kind of bothered me a little bit so i appreciate dick's comment that we're basically sitting in a <clears throat> contaminated zone anyways and with potatoes <laughs> no i used to work tobacco fields yeah. over there so i'm well aware of what went on over there as well but just because something's happened in the past doesn't mean that, you no, know what i, I know, mean I so or make it acceptable it. so we're just asking for people like if you had grandkids over in your yard and having a picnic you know do you want to see people with suits out you know, spraying yeah. might not either. We so. understand that. Yeah. But our wells so. are contaminated up on Churro Street. Well. Yeah. Well, that's why I pointed that out. Yeah. So, so thank you. We've, we've thank been you. contaminated too much already. That was the point. No. So thank you for your time. I'd thank like you. to talk about the flag a little bit. Okay. Joe's probably going to strangle me as I move <laughs> over. But I suggested that he put a windsock up. But the flag idea seems to be, I almost seem like if you leave a flag up all the time, it'll give a, some kind of a bearing for wind direction. We're thinking about the windsock thing too, though. Yeah. No, I brought that. Put up. something on the thing so forward. Yeah. So people can see which way the direction the wind is blowing, and they would be more rel I'd be more relaxed, to, quite honestly, if the flag Unless was the down. Unless the wind's blowing or, toward your house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> but I, made, I, I they think. They make them go. Well, maybe we'll wait. Yeah, a, but, wait a minute. Yeah, but I think the idea of maybe having a windsock, if yeah. you could install a windsock, that would. Yep. And when people are spraying, you can right. see that. In I fact, like Dick's suggestion. I brought it back to these yeah. guys, and we yeah, are going to yeah. explore that. Good. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Again, it, like all these little suggestions really are helpful. Mm -hmm. And I know you cannot guarantee that you'll spray very early in the morning when there's you know least we'll amount try. of drift. We'll try. But I know you try. So if you could do that, that would be good because that would uh, you know assure the neighborhood you know when in the nicer evenings or whatever right. that right. if they happen to be out in their yard, they don't have to right. worry. Absolutely. Um, so that would be nice. Yeah. Right. Yes. yes. Kenny Effie, <clears throat> 5 Beaver Drive. I'm the open abutter. My land is completely open. I don't have a block. I don't have anything. Well, I think that's why they're going to put and the barrier this is, up. So, this is why I'm so worried about this. I have a dermatologist. I'm having dermatology issues already just from moving in. And he wants to know what chemicals you're spraying. He told me to get a list. Um, we have that for you. I also wonder why the Board of Health has never done a water survey. Like, what? where's the runoff from all of this spraying? It's going into the Connecticut River. Has the town ever looked at that? There, there, yes, yes, we have. There isn't, the, there isn't the runoff. I mean, they're not using the magnitude of, of chemicals mm -hmm. that would... It, so, it's not like a big field that they're doing at once. They're doing their plots. Right, I understand that. But what am I, as a neighbor, as a resident of South Deerfield, supposed to do? I see a flag. What am I supposed to do? Run and well, hide in my house and close my windows all summer? Well, what we're doing is plant, putting the barrier up. And, you know, your, shouldn't, your property shouldn't be open anymore. So you should will have some protection with the plantings. Yeah, I also don't want to feel like totally boxed in. I already have arborvitae on both sides. So if they're thinking arborvitae, I would like to have some input as to how close you put that to my property because I'm just going to feel like I'm totally blocked in, no airflow, no nothing. Well, I, I feel like the barrier is a really good suggestion for them as well as you. So, um, you know. So who do I talk to at UMass about a different kind of barrier. Well, I, I think one of you they'll, guys. They'll, they're going to plant um, evergreens because I feel like that, I don't know if it's going to be arborvitaes, but some type of evergreen because I think that will be a benefit to everybody, the four abutters. Um, you could maybe cut down your barrier on your sides if you would like a little. So you don't feel so boxed in. But I, so, I think so my so my solution is just to close all my windows. See, I work. I'm not home all day. So I'm not gonna see a flag. If I leave my windows open, because the last chemical that they sprayed in the fall 
and we did get the sheet for it said contact it was skin contact it said take your clothes off don't wear your clothes in the house i mean that's why we want to see the chemical list because well, that will be on the, it will be on and the you website can take that to your yeah, so it will be on the website not like a nothing thing I, I know, but I, don't, I understand. I don't think it's like but a, the volume a plane of chemicals flying over and spraying either. So it's, yeah. not, it's, you know, it's not this massive mist that's wa waffling down. Um, it, they're doing small plots. Yeah. They're it doing foot-by-foot foot plots. But it's still, it comes in. If you have, if you have an abutting land, you're getting that contamination. Mm -hmm. And it is contamination. And I want to be on the record of saying that. Okay. Because I okay. think this is No, really I understand. I understand. Thank we're you. Just, we're oh, trying nothing, to be, you know, we're it's trying to be as extremely reasonable yeah, as possible. Yeah, that's why we're here today. And, and, yeah. mm -hmm. and we'll keep you know, working on that. Because down as, a, as a resident of South Deerfield, I feel like the Board of Health is here to protect the residents. And, the, and we, that, we that's are. That's why we're here. And that's we are. That's why we're here. They've been here 40 years. Absolutely working with us. I don't feel protected. Well, I don't, yeah. So I'm sorry. We can do the best we can, but we won't be able to completely protect your property with you know a complete barrier it's just I don't see protection not possible at all. <laughs> well, well of course I, not they haven't started yeah well there will be a barrier planted though mm -hmm. all right would mm -hmm. you be comfortable living there yes uh, yes yes I, would. I actually that's why i'm so pleased with joe dick and i have worked to them? yes 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 i would i actually i always look i always take um a hundred percent in if i was an abutting neighbor and Dick and I have been working with Joe for this last two weeks, and I have to say I'm, I am very satisfied. Sure. And, and that would be as if I'm, I'm an abutter neighbor. I wish you had included the abutters in working together. We, we are, we are. That's why we're here. Well, we're, that's why we're here. That's why we're here. I mean in the process. Well, well I mean, yeah. we're trying to. That's why we've had Joe come back. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Dick is in a butter as well, or down the street, so. Yeah. My, my boundary line's 13 feet from the other farm. I've been there for 30 something years. Have, have I had problems? I had a problem before I came here. The dust was blowing, the wind was blowing, and blowing on, on the side of my house. Expecting them to mitigate that from, from my standpoint is unreasonable because it's a farm agricultural section it's not the same as the turf farm, okay? But it's a different thing that happens to me is I've got dust and dirt all over my house, okay? The turf farm is a little bit different. And if you understand the spraying mechanisms that they have and what they're going to, to do is low pressure, closer to the ground, right. less bounce of the liquid material will not bounce and atomize into the air anywhere near uh, the factor if they come over and spray at my house because they use a different sprayer, a high pressure, much higher volumes, okay? And they're doing the proper thing. I'm, I have to say that UMass has stepped up to the plate. They've gone into discussions with us. They've asked us for recommendations. And you're here tonight for recommendations to try to help, help this, okay? And they're not bowing out by any means and they're going to give you the MDS sheets or whatever you want to have, and they're going to do the plantings, they're going to do the low pressure spraying, they're going to put the flag up. The, the flag in itself uh, would give you an, a wind indicator of what the, anything was going to blow towards your neighborhood. So, and then what? Well, <laughs> I, I, I feel like we I, can do some adjustments over the winter yeah. after we see what happens with this suggestions. But I feel very satisfied that UMass is, in fact, stepping, as Dick said, stepping up to the plate. And so I think they're really reasonable. And um, we'll just see how things work out. But I, I, I do feel that if I was, was in your house, I would feel comfortable. Well, that's, we, we differ on that. I'm glad you feel satisfied. Well, I have to tell you, I'm always more, much more nervous about h homeowners using Roundup themselves. And, mm -hmm. and the way they dispose of containers and the way they dispose, uh, spray it all over the place, whenever the conditions are. I, as a board of health, I am much more concerned about residential my, roundup use than what's nobody happening. Nobody in my, in my area uses anything like that. Wow. So to be backing up to them is just appalling. 
and I will be looking into this more. Thank you. Uh, I yeah, thank you, Joe. You're very I really appreciate all the work Thanks you've done. Yes, ma'am. You have one more question? Of course. Sure. sure. Um, I do appreciate Hannah's um, concept because we're the ones with the arborvitaes, in, and she's got arborvitaes on her other side as well, too. And that's why I wanted to talk to the person who's going to be putting the barrier plants in because I can't have an absolute another arborvitae run there. I'm going to have to chop some of mine down because they do a great job of preventing airflow, mm -hmm. um, which is good in the wintertime. But in the summertime, you're going to pass out in my backyard. Mm -hmm. So th I just want to put it out there that I'm hoping that we can work a little bit, maybe not have right the, up to it, yeah, but more or some have them be staggered or right, not exactly. quite. A, a, quite the barrier maybe that people were envisioning. Okay. But, um, I, I so. thought people wanted a barrier. Yeah. So. Well, well uh, no, but maybe not but right, you, like right up to it, maybe back a yeah, little. Yeah, so or kind of staggered and stuff sides. because. Yeah. Um, I see what you mean. If you've looked at the property, you're going to see most of us have totally outlined with, with arborvitaes just because of the wind tunnel. Right. It gets so windy there. Down that so, And now that they're full grown. Um, yeah. I, that's why I just said houses. they are. So that's why I'd like to work with you. So it's not like a straight. Give us a little airflow, you, you know. But we'll we'll work with you. I mean, we'll work with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, okay. But, I'm sure you'll do that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll Thank you. Best. Yes, I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys you for very coming. much for coming. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. it. Oh. Next item. I guess we'll go down to review the uh, fiscal year 20 budget. With the finance committee recommendations, you have your book. Go for it. What's that? Do you have any particular place you'd like to start? Um, just look at this what do we have left that we have to do? Do you want to just um, zip down them real quick? I mean, this is probably our last look yeah. at them. I, I mostly, I guess I, I wanted to um, specifically to just, you know, talk about the things that they had sort of talked about last night about, um, you know, any questions they had about Frontier, the sewer, um, today there was a question about funding the police department motorcycle. Um, I don't know if that was recommended or not. So anything that, mm -hmm. um, I think you guys had some discussion last night about any, any differences. So right, or we, went over, we went over salaries, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was, um, I don't know if we need to re-vote that at this board. I mean, we did vote. You already voted it, right? No, enough. they're just um, going to incorporate them into the, right? Yep. Um, I just want to go through these quickly and see where we're at. Um, did you have a... So the, uh, John was looking to put that motorcycle on as a warrant article to have the people decide whether they want to buy it. They want to buy the motorcycle. Yes. I don't, I don't remember. Was it a dollar amount? It was like 13, 13 5, 5, Yeah, 13, 13 5, 5, I think. 13, 5. Um, yeah. I think that's to purchase it, right? The, and and the lease or to whatever. to use what? Free cash for that? Um, we have to we, decide we will, where that we money will would decide. come from. Yeah. Well, according to Brenda, Brenda's working on, um, you know, we're finalizing the warrant. I mean, the warrant articles will also raise appropriate and otherwise provide. When I say warrant articles, we're also simultaneously doing the motions. But um, we, the way that our budget is this year, we have quite, um, we have a, some excess capacity. So we'll raise and appropriate many of those articles. And then we do have a section of, we have designated some that we'll use free cash for too. And then, you know, you know, if there's any, but there's, there's, the budget is looking good. The revenues are in excess mm -hmm. of the expenses. So. Right. Well, while we're talking about the motorcycle, I yeah. think that we should put, I think we should put the article on there and let the people vote. Right. You know? I think you're right about that. Um, I agree. Because um, I think everybody was on the fence 
I mean, there's pros and cons both ways. There is pros and, and cons. I mean, they had it out today. They were at the they were at the track meet today with it, and um, you know, I think it's a good machine to have around. Whether it's a want or a need is a different. I don't know how yeah. you guys feel about I mean, it, but I don't. There's <laughs> there's nobody in this town, and I can say that clearly, that has more love for motorcycles than I do. I mean, is that uh, right? That's right. Okay. I, I mean, I my. I forgot you. Yes, my, that's right. You my, were involved uh, with the motorcycle my, store. That's right. My my. <laughs> I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but my intellect on the motorcycles and even going into. I spent a lot of time working with these uh, Japanese metallurgists. I know all about the different types of metals, different parts are made of. Oh, okay. And the stress points, why some metals will snap and why some bend, and huh. you know, I love them. I okay. I do. But sitting here, yeah. with all the bills that the town have, I just right. don't think it's a practical thing to do. Mm -hmm. But so that's how I sit on it. Yeah. yeah. But it's not. I'm one of three thousand people who get to pick. They get so. to pick, right? And, and I, I think guess. anything like this is, you know, let the let the voters. Yeah. Uh, how choose. long do they expect that thing to last? I mean, I know these are questions for John, but I didn't know. Um, no, I, I I think that it will. It's you know, in good it's, shape. It yeah, probably lasts five, new. six it years, will, seven years. Oh, it'll so. last a lot longer than that. It should, um, it should last a good 10 years because you're only using it in good right, weather. Right, in the, in the good it, weather. And then it's at least 20, 20 Depends on how you take yeah, care of it. Exactly. It'll last 50 years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's... Well, I'm trying to be... Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's, that's nothing. Uh, you know, the, the thing is, is that, and I don't know this, and, and I spoke with John briefly about it, not recently, it's, like, it's not only just the motorcycle. How much money have we spent <coughs> on training people to ride it? Right. How much money have we spent on equipment, equipment for helmets. them to do this? And, yeah. you know... I like that. I just, I don't know. Okay. okay. Well, we'll let, let them let the decide. People vote okay. It and, yep. Okay. So motorcycle, yes, got it. Okay. All right. So I'll add that on. Well, I have it on your draft already, but just I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Um. I. Okay. I guess I'll let you go ahead, Trevor, and finish. No, nope, just um. I was just going through real quick and see. And we still don't have frontiers. Capital, right? Because we don't have a warrant article yet for that, or do we have one? I have one in your packet. Will it be yeah. in in this line, Frontier Capital, or will it be a warrant article? No, the warrant. The the only thing that would go on to the warrant at this point would be the article. I have it in your packet, but the article that is going to um, to basically authorize the town, you know, authorize town meeting to approve. Frontiers borrowing, mm -hmm. and the way now that we understand it is that you can make that contingent on a debt exclusion vote. Okay, good. So now the que the question about um, the the so this has not been voted yet. So right. That's tomorrow night. They're going to vote. Oh, what I was going to say is I th I am I mistaken that I thought that. There was a whole process that had to come, and we have to go back for a, a, a different meeting right. than to do this. Right. We were thinking that. That's right. So, uh, so we had well, some confusion. Okay. Right. So we had some confusion initially because the law that talks about the um, the the school committee doing the authorization to borrow talks about a disapproved vote at town meeting that all the towns have the right to take a vote at town meeting whether to disapprove that authorization and then there's something further in that same section of law which talks about if if the um, if the towns are silent on that approval or if they approve it that then a a vote a special election or a ballot vote is required um, so it's it is really misleading but there is another section of 71 chapter 71 which is what talks about all this that clarifies you only have to do that ballot vote the school only has to call that ballot vote if it's in the regional agreement and it's not and your regional agreement is silent on that it is. so but what it makes it makes it better for the town or, or it makes it so that you can debt exclude the town meeting vote and it isn't perceived to be approved until that debt exclusion vote passes so in other words you go to town meeting if it's voted approved it's still not voted approved until the election so vote it would be on occurs. the ballot the following monday is what, what no no so that therein lies the rub because the school committee has not voted it 
we are bumping up against the 35 days. The right. town clerk doesn't have the, the legal authority to waive that 30 days. So right. she can't, if she had the vote already, but she doesn't even have the vote. She has to get the vote from them if that the they, cert they certify it and give it to her. And then she would have, then, sh then you would have to say, put it on the ballot. And so we can't just put it no on the ballot until they vote. Correct. So, well, and, and that, then we would do a debt exclusion vote, I guess, well, in, at, in the fall. Because they're not going to need money this yeah, year. Yeah, anyway. you would just have to have a spot. You'd have to have another election to do the debt exclusion vote. So, then you, so that's when we can also then talk about. Election. Now, when you say election, you don't mean a, a special town meeting. I no, mean a special no, election, a ballot election. vote. Yeah, so ballot maybe vote. in the November. So, just so I'm Correct. clear, regardless of how this goes, the, the actual authorization to spend that money. It would be a ballot vote. People come in and yes or no, okay. It's contingent no. on, if it's voted at town meeting and you make it contingent on a debt exclusion vote, yes. it, is not pers it is not approved Approved. until that debt exclusion, exclusion vote passes in and the affirmative. And that would be a ballot vote. Correct. Okay. How much is that going to be to run an election, a ballot election? Well, we wouldn't do that until... November, right? When yeah. we have an election already. Well, uh, do we have a, an election? We have, a, we have an election Is there every one November, every, right? I, I don't know. No. I don't no. think we do have one this we year. We don't have one this no. year at all? I don't think so. This is 2019. Yeah. Oh, right. No, I don't think so. I think we would have to have a vote. And I don't know the answer, Carolyn. I didn't ask Barbara. But Barbara and I had this conversation. She didn't mention, you know, that it's exorbitant. But There's a lot of things that seem kind of up in the air. So first of all, all four towns have to pass it. Correct. And then all four towns have to pass it at the ballot too not necessarily okay. only if the towns okay, choose to put the town meeting vote contingent on a okay. ballot vote if they don't they can either not put the town meeting vote on at all which inherently means it's approved yep. the school's authorization is approved how we want to do it. they can put it on and they could make it contingent on a debt exclusion meaning they have to have a follow-up election yep. or they could um, put it on not contingent and just approve it flat out at town meeting. So all of those possibilities could occur in the other I, towns. I have the same mentality as I had for the motorcycle. I think it should be on the town meeting thing, to whether we want to approve it or not, and it should be on a ballot vote mm -hmm. to let the people vote. Yeah. That, I think that's yeah. the, the fairest yeah. way. Yeah, that's the only I, that I think that's with everything, yeah. you know, let yeah. the people choose, mm -hmm. yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah. No, I agree, yeah. I agree. Yeah. It's just, I, it's just extra expense, that's all. I know it is frustrating. I, the I, timing of it. The school I, was trying just, to help us in some it sense, won't be, but the it won't cost thirteen thousand dollars. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, I don't know how much those things okay. cost. Okay, so All so right. yeah, right. so Probably confirmed. We will have a a town meeting vote on the uh, our, on the warrant that will be to. Um, to, to basically, it, I, it's in your packet, but mm -hmm. and it will be contingent on a debt exclusion. Right. Okay. Are there any more things about the finance committee recommendations that we want to talk about? I don't. I guess just it's also part of the next piece, which is the um, the town meeting. But just about the sewer vote, I think mm -hmm. you know we need to. I need to know: Are we putting an article on the on the warrant, and what it is? I would like to put a vote, put an article on the warrant to ask for the project for phase one and three uh, to, to authorize borrowing for that, but for the project and at debt excluded. And then... Um, I've really been racking my brain mm -hmm. about this because I, I understand the necessity to, to push this forward, but I still struggle with, I, I don't struggle, I mean, it's like, it's impossible to tell people if they say, all right, what are you gonna spend the money on? And we're gonna say, authorize a, the money and we'll figure it out as we go. It's like, well, I think part of that's going to have to just because if, if we don't, then you can foot the whole bill. I mean, the idea is to get a grant. I think I think I can make a case for that. And if I don't make the case, then we will have to come back again next year anyways. But um, I think it's worth trying to get grant money. And the best way to do that is to get authorization for this in USDA sees or SRF sees that we are um, committed to doing this project. We don't have to borrow a penny. All we're doing is asking for the authority to, and that our plan is to do a headworks building, channel clear. Um, I spent some time at the um, plant today just getting my head around how it flows and what needs to happen and what the, what the clarifier looks like, where the other clarifier would go, and 
uh, talk to Keith a bit about how things run there again, just because it's been a while since I've been there. And um, I, you know, you obviously can see the needs there. I mean, you walk out on the clarifier thing, and it's, the track is rusted through like crazy. Like you never know when that's going to go. And they're out there every day scooping stuff off with a pool net, mosquito net, because there's so much junk that comes through there. Like you said, if you had a chair cleaner in Agamas, a lot of that would get cleaned yeah, out. But to me, it it it, it, it just. <laughs> It just rings foolishness to me because that? The, having to, having all that clean for right, the last three years, exactly. we should have just put that thing in there and all of that issue. It would not, I'm not saying it would have fix fixed everything. Fix the plan. Right. No, it wouldn't. But it, but it would get rid of all that stuff. I agree And with you. if you speak to them as to why that clarifier broke, the biggest reason is because it froze because of all this stuff that was on there. If it wasn't there, who knows? Right. Oh, you I know. see what you mean. The, the stuff collected and then it right. froze kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So, um, no, I agree with you. It's it's a mess. And as he, as I talked to Keith today, he said the one thing, if you do anything, you do a headworks, what, what, meaning clean that stuff clean out that of stuff. there. Oh, yeah. yeah and uh, he said all this other stuff needs to happen. We talked about the, you know, the yep. pumping building, which is not in phase one. There's other stuff that needs to get done there oh, that yeah. we're not addressing. But a lot of it I think we will take care of. And, I, I'll, I you know, between David, uh, Keith, Kevin, us, uh, to talking, I'd love to do a small presentation at town meeting if the moderator will allow us, you know, five minutes to explain this article with maybe some slideshows of the deterioration of that building, of the items. Th this is what we're looking at doing. You know, we have data here. If anybody wants to look through it, we have a sewer study committee helping the town with this. This is not willy nilly like we want 19 million and we're not sure how we're going to spend it. Part of it is true. We're not completely sure how it's all well, going to fit wanna, together. I was just going to say we, we want to be efficient. We so, want yes. If there's so any way to make that if 18 we're or cut, 17, cut or, the expenses. We're going to cut. We're the on it. Yeah, right without now. being foolish, right? I, I mean, know. you know. But you know, just this is just some some history in case mm -hmm. you guys didn't know. I I learned that uh, you know before we used to have sewer commissioners, people that were on the sewer, mm -hmm. and it was a power struggle that. Uh, a particular selectman made an argument to town meeting and changed that and put it oh. in the hands of, you know, Just the, select the select board, board. not the sewer commissions. It wasn't because there weren't people available. Huh. And the other thing is back in the late 80s, when was we that? did spend. Is in the 80s? No, it was in the uh, 70s. 70, early 70s. Wow. Hmm. And then in, I think he said it was 86, they spent $800,000 on that plan. Yes, that was the grant they got to do the secondary clarifier. No, that, that was, was that that, uh, that the building addition mm -hmm. and that, that, that big blue pump building. Uh, I'm not sure what you call it. You saw that big blue mechanical thing in there. They used to pump all the sewage through that, and it would compress it out. Oh. But it did, what it didn't do is it didn't uh, dewater and stuff. And because it didn't dewater, the the content. Uh, the copper content was too high, and the DEP wouldn't allow it to go into landfill anymore. Uh, so they just, you know, stopped using that. Right. You know, with, there were some other issues with that too. Yeah, I know they so. stocked up a lot of that stuff. I was talking to yeah. Keith today. You know, like when they, when they clean all the stuff out of the center clarifier, all that junk kind of goes into a, the last operator would kind of, that sump pump building, yeah. like that sump building or wherever, yep. the sludge building. A lot of it's not usable because right. a lot they, they chopped it up into a lot of different things, as you know, yeah. and then um, some of it's filled with junk. And so you you know if he needs to 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 waste, you know, a lot of this is the, the the mechanism of this for everybody that's interested is is your microbes to food. Right. You know, that's really the food coming in and the microbes. And if you get one out of whack. It's really easy to do that, you know, have it go out of whack. So you really got to waste off some of those bugs or, you know, so that they can get hungry again and eat the foods. If you have too many bugs, it doesn't work. So it's, it's a constant thing of wasting. But the problem is where it's getting wasted to, there's only one pit left. He can only waste 21,000 gallons because the rest of it's full with junk we can't get rid of because the landfill's closed. No one else takes it. Chickabee's closed, Ludlow's closed. So, you know, we're stuck with all this stuff. So we have this... Thing. He'd like to blow those things back out and use that whole thing because if he has to waste in a hurry, you know, what I didn't understand, and this is naivete, I don't run a plant, but I always thought, you know, flow went into that thing, you worked it up, and then you pumped it out when you were ready. But that goes through 24-7. Yeah. 
it doesn't you don't stop. you don't stop it and work on it. No, no, no. You it come, whatever's coming in, rain, people flush the toilets all at once. It all goes through that plant at one shot. Yep. So and whatever's coming in is going out the same time. It's not like you're going to hold it and go, okay, we're going to do this, and then when we don't have much, we'll no. let it go. No, it's a constant. Right. So all and of a sudden, you have too many bugs. What do you do? And it's still coming in. So it's a constant balancing act of trying to waste bugs, put it here, nowhere to put it here. It's, I swear that man is like, uh, it's, it's, balls are in the air all the time with, with deficient project, with, you know, products. Yeah. It's just a, a challenge. A really eye opener to really understand how it works, and what condition it's in. So, you should go, you should spend a little time. You should go to Hatfield and Sunderland too, just yes. to see how they do. Because they're similar too, right? Almost Plants, identical, yeah. Both by the same people. So. Right. Yep. Orange, I know, was very similar as well. Almost uh -huh. all of them are the same because they were put in under the Clean Water Act. Yep. And it was like a little uh, uh, cookie cutter, like cut, a McDonald's cookie cutter yeah. all 40 kind of thing. Years old. Yeah. They're all the for you. Nobody, everybody <laughs> needs the money. Yep. Forty or fifty. Now. So, it's so yeah. pretty interesting how that all works. But I, you Ours know, we'll make a case. I'll, I'm going to make do, do the best I can. And so, do you do you want to go down to the USDA? Office? Yes. Yes. I think we should. So I wanted. I did want to mention this too. So I got a call from um, the folks. Well, it had come from from James, but he had gotten a call directly from USDA. Yep. And the grant had been moved to, to Washington yes. and had gotten the congressman's letter and everything yes. was good. And he asked me to send him a copy of the vote. He said yes. USDA wanted the vote. So I sent him the, you know, I'm getting the vote ready and sent it. And he's like, no, the vote. So he's, he's like the vote for the project. Right. And I'm like, that we don't have the vote for the project. All we have is this vote. This so one million. For the million. So it's already gone to Washington. It's already been, it's being advocated for, but they're looking for, like, that we voted the project. And we and, haven't, and voted, we haven't voted it. So I, I do That's think you should really consider, if you want the USDA money. Doesn't mean we need to spend it. You should we could do nothing for a year. But I think that's part of that's part of how you advocate for the grant. It shows that you're committed. Right. It's so your commitment. Right? What what you need to say, what we need to do is say it's going to go be it's right. on the warrant. I want to send them the warrant as soon as I have it. I would send right. them right. a copy of it. So but I I make a motion that I make a motion that we put this on the warrant. I second that motion. Um, Question is, is there any more discussion? I'm trying to think what I'd like to add to that. Um, I don't know. It's, for me, this is very complicated. Mm -hmm. It seems like it should be a, a, a slam dunk, but it's, I, it's I know it's your hesitation. Cost. I get it, it's, you. It's, not, it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's. The only thing I can tell you is that we're not going to spend the money until we're satisfied that that's the most efficient, effective way and to do it. And we're getting the most. But we, this is part of how you advocate for this, and we're not doing this enough. And this is, I'm getting an ulcer of this. I've been talking about this yeah. since December. You have to jump through certain hoops. You've got to tell your story. And you've got to talk to people. Otherwise, we don't that. get our money. I get that. And but if we're going to get, if people want to get any grant money, then they've got to give us the ability to tell our story and jump through the hoops. This is how you get grant money. I have hustled money for this town for every single year that I have done stuff for 30 years working on the planning board money and now on select board. I have always hustled money. And this is how you do it. You have to have your story. You have to have all your stuff. And, and I get that and I totally understand that. The problem is what we don't do is get the project in order. So now once again, we're going there looking for money, which, you know, well, we're looking for money, and we're asking the people to appropriate a large amount of money that is going to affect a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. Yeah. And, I mean, I was just reading this thing about this whole affordable housing thing. Do you realize that if this went through the way we're proposing it, that almost everybody in this town, their rents will even go up for anywhere from 40 to $50 Kip, a month. Kip, if we get no money... It will go up more. That's just not true, because that's what you said about the elementary school. If we don't get this $3 million, it's going to cost us more. Well, and that's not true. If it, it can't you cost know. less if you don't have money. I mean, how do you... How, how, so if you don't the get project a, is going to be what, whatever we decide it's going to be, right? Right. So it's that much money. If we have no grant money, it can't get any, you know, it can't get any less money. Right. 
Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I know I, what I, you're I, saying. You're yeah. saying like, let's get efficient and lay out exactly right. what we're going to do. That costs first. money and time. And I know right. if we had, if we had three years to plan this, we could do that. Or right. if we had a bunch more money to get engineers to actually draw the plan out. But you know, part of the USDA is they'll pay for that drawing of the plans. And, and, stuff. and I get that. But you know, because we got our information, and it's still. It's, it's very incomplete. It's always it, going to be incomplete until we get it drawn and done in a plan. It will be because we're going to change things. We have all the to way do through. the clarifier, but if we get the, the grant, if if we get the grant, the USDA grant, part of that USDA grant is going to pay for the clarifier. I, so I, right off, we I, haven't spent a million I understand dollars that, that we just why, appropriated. Why don't you? I guess I'm frustrated because it's like you don't you, you want to ignore history, and the history was four years ago. The select board did this exact. Exact same mm -hmm. thing. How much did you spend? Two hundred eighty thousand dollars. Kip, Kip. I, I, no, please. Just how much did it was two hundred. Kip, when we put the sewer committee together, okay, yep. we wasted eighteen months, and people were quitting. They were mad at each other, and there was no solution. Okay, we lost eighteen months. Everybody gained some knowledge and are more educated, but nobody came up with a solution and a pathway that is any better than we have right now today. All right. Okay, it's vague. I understand that. I am very uncomfortable about committing to anything until we know exactly what we're going to do. But I can all, I can guarantee that not a single dime is going to go out the door until we know for sure that it's the most effective, efficient thing to do. But. We have to apply you're for this grant. You're asking for the money, but you're not asking. You're not. You don't have to borrow it. Is the we're idea. not going to borrow the you, money. We're not going to. We're not going to even commit to doing anything. But we got to look like we we are, and we got to do this for the USDA grant. This I've been talking about have, this since December. We have 380 page document of bid ready plans. It shows every nut, bolt, and screw that goes into redoing that plant. And we had all the documents. We submitted it to Mass Works for a grant. Mm -hmm. We were denied. Okay, we, there was, that was another rush to judgment thing because, it, and this is, this is going well, down the same path. I think what that was, and I wasn't here at the time, but I mm -hmm. believe what that was, was you're, you're partly correct about that. The idea was that if we could get a Mass Works grant, we, and the whole way we did that apparently was to look at regionalization, pulling in Waitley, pulling in Sunderland, and doing a community thing. And we it was also we for a HUD grant. That. It was a multi multiple. Right. It was multiple grant kind of things. But you're right. But it, it was for it was a HUD grant. It, it was for it was hazard bigger mitigation. than it needed to be. Right. It went out to saying. three no, different no. grant possibilities, and but, we didn't get it. But no, you, that's not what I'm saying. You're right that it, it wasn't what we needed. But what I'm looking at is the history of rushing to do that. And I understand it's been four years and nothing has got done. And I think that you're going to have a hard time selling this to the people trying to put in such a large amount of money because it affects so many things, you know? Mm -hmm. It's gonna be hard, I have and, no, no doubt about and, that. And to say- I, It shouldn't be an easy to, vote. To do the repairs that's necessary over there, it depends if you're going to do the, the, if you're going in the direction that our consultant is, you know, guiding us down, then yes, you know, it's going to be the $19 million less, whatever we get the grants. But we don't, I mean, I feel strongly that there are other ways to do this for a lot less money. You I'm know? open to those. You know? I, I, and I and, think, and, and I think and so the I am committee too. and I, you, and even I, if you're not, not on the board in a month and yep. you're and yep. on the sewer committee, you're going to be pushing that engineer, whether yep. it's Prickett or somebody else, to, to really say, look, where does this need to go? But I mean, Kip, I want to hear all those opportunities. You were on that committee for 18 months. Yep. People quit yes. because they were mad that you couldn't come to consensus. They didn't agree with you, so they quit. Well, and, and that they, was didn't, the they didn't quit because they didn't well, agree with me or I didn't agree with them. But, okay, so it was a standoff. No, no, well, no, no, no consensus. No. What, what it so was. What, we're moving ahead. That's the thing. We can't waste any more time. All right. Let's I, just honestly, move ahead. You'll see. Okay. What's next? Okay. So I guess, so you have a, 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 you have a motion and a second on the table. You were in discussion yes, for, the mo for the, artic for the uh, article for the sewer. So before right. you finish... 
I do need some answers. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Are, is the, what is going to be, I don't need for the warrant, but I need for the motions, yep. the value. I need the to know what the dollar nine, value is going to be. 19 million. Okay, well that wasn't in the motion, but he's saying 19 million for a discussion. Yes. And, and the, um, also what is, I, I will need to identify the project, what the project is, because if you're gonna make it contingent on a debt exclusion, yep. that language is what goes in the debt exclusion. Though. Based on the assessment we have, which would be phase one and phase three of the current DPC or DCP, I don't know, DCP or something, uh, assessment. Mm -hmm. um, which would be, which would consist of um, a secondary clarifier, um, the uh, Headworks program, Headworks building, the um, changing from chlorine to uh, UV for cleaning. You know, disinfectant mm -hmm. before it goes in. I mean, in. I'll clarify this. With yeah, DPC, exactly. But, but that's I mean, all yes, those. I, but, the, and yes, then, thank and you. then updating, sure you guys all agree updating of the plumbing there, and then you know, redoing the the way the things flow, and then the um, electrical that goes along with that, right. we which would mean put... a generator of some sort outside the building. Okay. Because right now it's in the building, which isn't safe. Apparently. Okay. So basically, I mean, because I I don't think it's going to be enough to put in the debt exclusion vote just phase one and phase three. Right. So I'm going to have just to more put more of a clarification right. of what similar we're to what do. I did the in the, the one for a special is, town meeting I where I put in you know what the and then it would say all all uh, all things connected to that all the design and engineering and all that that goes with it and so you're. Are, I just want to understand. You're saying that $19 million is for just phase one and phase three. That and I think that what that constituted was the, the some of some of the uh, collection systems that were in there as well for the South Deerfield plant, the uh, mitigation, which we'd love to pull off to the resilient, you know, well, whatever I, we can I do on that. I was just going to say, um, right. I, I want it to be included. In there because right because that's we don't know we don't sure. know where we'll get the funding we'll get from the funding. But we're going to try but I, I want to be able to describe that Diana Friday at that one o'clock meeting for the MVP okay we can amend our MVP um, plan yes. yeah. to include the resiliency part of that you know the building mm -hmm. up of the berm I know uh, berms uh, went in it because when I was talking to Keith today I guess sometime it flooded at one point and then everybody bought truckloads of sand in or something well, and put seed on yeah. top and that lifted up I know and protected I was there that. for seven hours with my own back oh is that right yeah. <laughs> digging that up uh, so I'm that putting uh, dirt there, yeah. yeah so that you know I assume that that would be some I don't know what the plan is for well, that but it's some sort of protection of the river when it fifth we could put that in we could amend the MVP plan because right now there's still only 20 communities that are certified so we have a very good chance of, of we just put in for the April 19th mm -hmm. um, Round the 272, 272,000 for the Mill Village culvert implementation. So the next round is July, the first week of July. So we need a descriptor of this resiliency, whatever. So that for Friday, okay, because we could we're meeting as a core group, so we could amend vote to amend the plan, and um, some and then work towards putting that in for the July round of money. Mm -hmm. And that's um, going to be on your agenda on the 17th, too. To yes. Chris is going to come in so and that give an update. We yeah. could we could formally vote to do that, um, to, hire, you know, to make sure Chris yep. puts that in the application. So that might actually come, because then that money, that round in July will probably be uh, decided on by August, because it seems like they do less than two or three weeks turnaround. Mm -hmm because there's hardly any applicants. So we might actually have that million dollars by the end of the summer. That would be wonderful. They so won't be ready for it, but you know, at least, you know, maybe they can, I don't know, well, I don't want to inhibit you, what they do yeah. for I construction. Because it's you can't even get a, a trailer truck. Once you built the berm, you can't get a trailer truck in there anymore. You gotta do box truck only for deliveries of everything. Because it, you know, maybe when they redo the resiliency, we kind of stretch that out a little bit more or adjust it. Yeah, yeah. They, they can get a trailer in there now. When you're down to the way down and back there, yeah. they can't get a, uh, they gotta the get other, box the trucks other thing, only because the truck can't make the corner because of the, um, 
the swale there and then the other part is well, well you so, can't turn around but, but yeah. some yeah. of the language some of the language under the MVP program remember we were gonna uh, was the uh, like resealing of the concrete tank for the clarifier mm -hmm. and remember we were gonna raise it up a little bit so it's more resilient and so the doing the tank mm -hmm. whole thing was gonna be part of an MVP program. We'll have to so, see about that so in the we, design of this first one as well. Yeah. I don't know if you can do the first one. Maybe the second one can happen. Yeah. You know, because uh, everything's tied together and it's already there. We're not redoing the whole yeah. tank. All right. So um, the other thing I want to mention, though, is that God forbid this goes south at town meeting and we don't get it passed. Um, I wonder if we should have an alternative um, um, well, you know, what we what we want or, or be able to amend that for at least the engineering. Um, well, what we, we want to do. Voting. Well, what we want to do is is vote this tonight, so it's printed up in the ballot. I mean, in the town meeting yep. warrant, so that it can go down to USDA. Then we right. can go and talk to USDA, and then we'll have a better idea. Hopefully, still before the April 29th meeting. It's coming fast. I know, but hopefully we'll have some more information whether they are moving on it enough so that we're asking people to approve this so that we can, mm -hmm. you know, or do we have a concrete dollar amount or a right. soft dollar amount or something, right. some indication. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I feel like we have to go down. I agree. You know, we need to look yeah, at our calendars. Too much money and, not to try. And just, you know, start sitting at somebody's desk. I mean, mm -hmm. that's how you do it. Right. So we just got to show up after this gets, if we Printed. can... We can is take there a, a time limit as to uh, when you spend their money? Usually USDA. have three years. Yeah. Usually have three years because you can go out to bid. I mean, because you have to design stuff, you have to bid it out, and then you have implementation. You have to deal with weather and seasons and all that. So they usually give you a three-year window. What was the timetable for that, the clarifier that needs to get repaired? Was that February of 20? I think I think it's going to be to April, if I, yeah. March or April. I think he was pushing it out. When I talked to him today, I think they. When you who's he? I talked to David today, yeah. and he. Um, I, I kind of confirmed that because that question came up last night, and I said I, I think we moved. The, he said that DEP had been talking with them too, and not wanting to give us that. They haven't written the hard letter yet because they were hoping to work with us to make sure that we got enough time to do it. I mean, they're not really like. No, the gun's not to your head, but they want to, you know, they got to get something on paper, but they're trying to get it, you know, to work with us. And we think that, you know, by, uh, I think it was March or April, we were trying to push it out to, to get that first clarifier done, uh, which is going to be tight, like you said, with the construction time and all that stuff. Uh, but well, he, he I just, feels pretty I think confident it's we to get it done. So. So right now you have a motion and a second on the floor for... Now you are uh, con uh, clarifying $19 million will be in the motion. Mm -hmm. All the articles right now um, in your um, warrant, the way you have done them for many years, is you don't put the value Correct. of the money. You just put sums of money. So right. I presume mm -hmm. you would just put an article that will say yep. sum of money in the motion. It will have the, the $19 million. Um, and then you are making it contingent on a debt exclusion vote? That was a recommendation of the finance yes, committee. Yes, I okay. think we can't do it I without assume, debt exclusion. Yes, okay, yeah. so contingent on a debt exclusion Correct. vote. And the debt exclusion vote, um, I would recommend, because you had um, voted previously to do a debt exclusion vote for this, or you had discussed it, Barbara had held a spot for you, even though you okay. had... You had you had it on the agenda previously, and you didn't con, you know you didn't vote, but you had sort of said no. I don't. We may not do it. But for the for the million for the million dollars for this one for the right. sewer for because the, because no for for, for the, the 19. for the nineteen for the well we thought it was going to be eleven point mm -hmm. five but right. now originally now we're we do nineteen right. one and so, two. Yeah, two but we had um, so she's so she has a placeholder for that. So she does the warrant. We'll go to print tomorrow. If okay. you vote it tonight, mm -hmm. that debt exclusion vote I would. Would suggest you put on your right. annual yeah so that way we have the answer we know because that's also means it's not going to pass really until the debt exclusion passes so right. I mean, we'll let usda it know we'll to. give them the whole you know oh no all we have to do is give them the paperwork yeah, to give start them the warrant with. exactly mm -hmm. right. and, and if I it agree. doesn't pass then i don't yeah i mean it will really kill our story yeah. but right. we'll just 
hopefully it will pass. But, to keep but, trying. But if it passes town meeting, then it would go to the next week. It would go to the election, and then you'd know. Then you'd you'd have it right, right. there. If that's what you vote, that's we'll what I would suggest is be on the table. I know, I know, I know. And but, you, right I mean, now you have a working, yeah. you have a workshop group for Monday morning. Mm -hmm. You have scheduled a meeting on April 17th, right. I think, the to have general public, him. I would yeah. suggest if you can't get him to cut on town meeting floor, He's maybe coming. you just do, I mean, if you don't do it during the meeting, you could have like a half an hour information session before if David wanted to yes, come and set up that's some That's my whole idea is I want to have a full And let people know. That way they can come pictures, before the meeting and yes. then they have to leave and, you know, check back in. Right, but at least right, you have a half an hour to talk and they can ask I think questions. It's worth because hour. I'd be happy with an hour. They will we'll have the most up-to-date information. You're not going to get people there an hour before. Yeah, I mean, you might not, but if you if you started at bucks, six, you, you might. <laughs> yeah, people people do come in. I mean, like well, I said, you have. To I mean, when, we'll have the most up to date information or, at that or point. Forty five minute, half hour, something like yeah. that. Yeah, you know, I just didn't want to cut off conversation then, before yeah. the. You know, I want to give yeah. enough time for yeah. people. That well, then you still have time meeting floor, but at least the course. people have been educated, and then they can educate themselves, right. each other, on town meeting we'll floor. We'll have we'll have the seventeenth, right, and then we'll have before town meeting. Yeah. And then town meeting, so. Yep. Okay. That's what we can do. All right. So goes. that's what It'll you've got fun. on the table in front of okay, you. Okay. So, so we got a motion. We got a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Okay. All right. Two to one. Two to one. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see. So I know town meeting warrant. Let me make sure I don't have yeah, anything else. Through, I have. I, a, I put in your warrant. packet yeah. um, the petitioned article just so you'd know. It's a ban calling for the U.S. to join the Treaty on Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. That was. I believe a, I put that in the packet just so you'd have a copy of it. Um, Today, so tonight. okay. I put that. I thought so I made we've, a copy. So we've we've done the. I'll, I'll look through that. Oh, I was. Yeah. On, I'm still kind of on the warrant. We sort of blended the budget. And the so warrant yeah, together. I want to go through the warrant just article by article. Can I? Just go through that first. Sure. I, I have to say I'm a little bit behind. I haven't updated it too That's much. Fine. I still That's need fine. to add the Frontier article. Yep. Um, the nuclear ban, she had sent that to me in Word, so I can add that. Um, I'm still working with Brenda on adding a couple things. So, so it's the gifts, um, the um, Dickinson. So. Um, I also put in your packet, I think I'd given them to you before, but just in case the motions for the um, CPC articles, there's three projects, and then they voted the percentages that will be put in, and that those uh, will be in the yep. motion packet, of course, as um, all separate motions. So the enterprise budget. Um, Is this? The only other article. The enterprise budget, uh, sewer enterprise budget. These oh, are that's current just, numbers no, or no, these no, last no, year no. numbers? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. No. I'm, please, please forgive me. That's a model. That so, those are not your numbers at all. Those, those are last year's I just, or something. I put that in there as something I just wanted to share with Brenda. That yep. um, this is the way that I understand that sewer art, you know, that su enterprise articles are done. This is the first year you're going to do a center, sewer enterprise right, and a scams. Exactly. So I was just showing her this. Okay. You know, that's usually what I and I think in the warrant, even though I won't have numbers in here, I will have no. Co we should still show where the money comes from. Absolutely. I think that's yeah, people can revenues. understand that. Yep, that's it's fine. It's good for them to understand that some, you yeah, know, the it, more and it has to balance better. each other out. Although SCEMS, you do um, allocate some money to offset your SCEMS assessment, I understand, from free cash. So. Yep. And then had we talked about a dollar amount for capital stabilization? I know we talked about something you last night. We didn't finalize that. We didn't finalize it. That's right. Was it started out at 250 and then we, we were, were talking about that 63,000 pay, paying off the pay off Oxford Pickle, Pickle so, so we're going to we're going, we're going to take it million? off, but then, but then we wanted a more even number. So right. you I talked think between one fifty and two. I think is what you were saying. Well, it might be emergency. She knows you're in a meeting. Um, um, so do you? Um, so I, do I think we were thinking of two hundred because we we're going to take at least fifty towards Six, the payoff. Uh, wasn't that right. number sixty three? It well, was. I, it was. Yeah. yeah. So maybe. Um, oh, and I have to. Well, then we can do just lower it down to one hundred seventy five. Or. Because we're going to be down to. It makes no sense. It makes no sense in my mind to put money into stabilization 
and not pay off this loan. No, I agree. Oh, with no, that. right. So, no, and but that so I think we're trip forty three so, in. Right. But I wonder, do we want to leave two hundred? So I would just, I would rather take money from the stabilization transfer than right, but that, reduce what we have left over any lower because we're getting pretty low. Well, that's right. what I'm saying. So maybe you leave two hundred in free cash or something like that, or what we were talking about. I, I would feel better if it was two hundred in free cash and then. Um, a hundred do 150 in right, stabilization exactly That's was fine. that make sense to you does yep. that make sense yep. to you so. just round the numbers yep. off right but, yep. exactly but, but not but not but take it from the stabilization money right the sitting there doing nothing exactly versus yeah. the free cash oh yeah we right. should okay. definitely exactly. take that off exactly because okay. yep. definitely because okay. the free cash will be certified again in the fall if we need it if yep. there's a screw Correct. up right so that'll or leave us 200 a cherry there. sheet problem mm -hmm. with the yeah, foundation budget. with the school exactly right. i know i mean we and again we got to go be, I mean, we just have to plan to go to Boston. We got to get people together on this. I, I, I don't know why it's just you and me that are worried about this. And Skip, Skip was there at that meeting. But about the three of us. The, the foundation budget, oh. the reform is going through. Foundation, oh, you mean for the school? So for the school. The school. Oh, yeah. The, it's going to be on this budget. It's going to be this year now. I haven't, I've tried to educate myself on this a lot. And, you know, it really does stink because not only we're in Western Mass, but we're a small community. And yeah. everything that comes out of Boston deals with the big cities, the yeah. inner city. I don't want to necessarily say inner cities, but the big schools and stuff like that. Big money. You know, big money. You're right. And it, it, it makes it hard for us. It does. It really does. But I'm really Even all I'm, pulled together. When we every were, part of town, every town in Western Massachusetts pulled together is not enough. It doesn't uh, even match Wellesley. I know. Right. I know. But what, what really bothers me is, is Trevor and I, went, when we went to the the workshops and stuff at, at Boston. There's no money, extra money. They're allocating no extra money in this foundation budget, but they're moving it around. And so, what does that it, mean? and it really yeah. seemed like they were, they're going to do a formula that favors the urban inner schools, so, which I'm not saying they don't deserve money, but, but it's got to come from somewhere because it's the same pie. Right. So that means it's coming from us. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's really, I'm freaking out on this. But, yeah. but to, to, to what Diana has said to us mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. Brenda is <laughs> when when they look at it, the people who are sitting in Boston and they're looking at educating children, they look at all children the same, yeah. you know. know. And know. so when they, I'm just going to pick a, a big city out in the eastern part of the state, they're spending, you know, 70 percent, you know, of what the state says, and they're like. No, you need to spend 100 percent. So then they come to Deerfield, and we're spending 150 percent. You know, well, the, then it's like, well, they don't need the help. Here's the other problem: is right. Wellesley will spend, you know, 20 times what it takes to educate their kids, or what is recommended by the state, and yet the state still gives them 300, you know, three million dollars a year to educate their kids because it's based on population. Right. They don't need the money. They, they're spending 10 times, 20 times what it costs to, to educate think, a kid. Every student's got their own microscope. I think micro, I remember seeing something. And laptop and you name it. Like they'll 20, pay all that, but it was the, all that something money thousand per kid. Still, goes, I know, I know. still goes to, to Wellesley. I know. They don't need the money, but for they have students. For foundations. For foundations. Right. Right. It's, yeah. it's, you know. right. But I think what Kip's alluding to, and I think yeah. that is a very good point. No, and, you're right. And I don't disagree. I think we need to figure out the zip code issue that you've talked about. I think right. that's yes. relative. That's well, it's 10% of but our, the, it's yeah. but, the but the foundation issue is another thing because you can't, as, as, as Kip said, what the state's trying to do is, is equalize. So right. they're not, if, you're, if your schools are funded at 150 or 167 percent, and I think in Frontier's case, above foundation, then they're going to think that you don't need that Chapter 70 money, and they're going to give it to schools who, when I, was in, when I was in Orange, when I first got there, the elementary schools weren't even making net school spending. And well, you guys are Sunderland spending isn't a hundred either. And you guys are spending 150% over we that. We value it but, here. It's but how, amazing. But Sunderland so, doesn't. But that's but how what I'm does, saying. How does Sunderland, it's, how does Sunderland they, not do it when they're elementary, but they, they, they do it in high school? That might be why they're struggling. That was the same problem we had in Orange. We struggled to fund the elementary at foundation at, at, at net right. school spending levels because we had to fund the regional at the level we had. Because you so, had other towns voting. They, yes. You know, they, and, you know, and someone so, needed to step up. You know, certain yeah. times they, they and, got and, and you actually, you're penalized for that. Like each year that you don't fund it, you're penalized. You have to make it up more the next yeah. year. So I'm just saying, I, I, I do, I think we need oh, to, we need to be treated 
fairly for the zip code issue, but right. I think the foundation issue. Well, I'm just we need so to worried if we don't start appeal. About, you know, we need to we need you know, to make more noise because seriously, it could be like three three or four hundred thousand. I think, it, and also, Carolyn, can't we count on like the 2020 census is coming? So that will definitely be something I think we can. You know, we should well, talk to the census folks because they're coming now to start to talk to people about things. So we can. Well, we better we better. It couldn't be a better time if we're going to solve it. Absolutely. Absolutely, Have I to think fill so it out. too. So. Well, once we get through town meeting, we've got to say that we're going to we're going to meet with uh, we Sean get Conan because is everyone every every time you talk to anybody in the Department of Education, they say, oh, just talk to Department of Revenue, and the only person that really seems to get us at all is Sean and Cronin. So mm -hmm. okay. we're, we're going to have to do that on a particular as soon as we get through town meeting. All right. OK. All right. All right. OK, so um, I'm just going things? through the 21. Okay. Um, and then I just want to mention last. So you so I heard you talk about the band. Oxford language payoff. You yep. are comfortable with putting that on the warrant? I am. To pay off the Oxford we loan? Are. Yeah, I think we are. Yep. With free cash? What? And why does it go no, from uh, 22 to 31? Yes, because oh, we're... Oh, I just haven't... I need okay. to renumber them. So yeah. there's what, basically what 23 gonna, articles. What we're, we're going to do is... Yeah, use, there's probably going to be, I think, 25 or 26. We're using less free, free cash for the stabilization transfer. Right. Well, someone exactly. was watching so TV and decided to come visit. Okay. <laughs> hey, Bruce. All right, Oxford language. So that'll go. Um, and... It's already wicked late, Bruce. We're not um, letting you talk. <laughs> What was the other? He drove all the way here. I was told I had to take my wife out to dinner tonight. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just fun. We have, we're not serving here today. <laughs> <laughs> and she's not here either. <laughs> okay. I, no, so I still have to update it, and I will um, do Kip that. Kip is already okay. rolling his eyes at me for talking. No, I was, oh I was going to well, say I took my wife out for dinner tonight, too, but she's in Orlando, and I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> How was it? <laughs> I don't know. I think she's trying to tell me. I don't know. <laughs> oh, right. So she was kind of quiet. So I said, yeah. I, I don't know. My phone, phone's been bi vibrating across the table here. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, and I guess the other thing I wanted to mention, um, and Bruce just reminded me when he came in, that the... Um, the capital improvement planning folks had talked about if you wanted to change what, you know, you had mentioned last night. Uh, yes, so this, that's I right. I only caught the end of it, if, but well, they said something about changing. Well, my thought was I was afraid that 40 wasn't going to be enough for the design work, and I didn't. Mm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, based on Vinod's email, and I know that's back of the napkin, and he was trying to be like, well, if the state's right. not really involved much, it's only going to be this much. So right. I was hoping to, you know, make a revision to to change that an amendment to change it to um 55 mm -hmm. but um when do we have yeah. to do that can we do that at town meeting floor well that's what we i think have to. i didn't um jeff had jeff upton and called me this afternoon to be honest and left a message i was super busy i didn't get to check but he asked me to look at the new language we had just adopted this past town meeting we had changed mm -hmm. the language and it, i think if i recall because i i mean i had looked at it before but i didn't look at it, at, you know, for a while, but it was just that the the plan had to be given to the finance committee at a certain point to make recommendations. That's what I thought. But I, I think you can change any, you know, when you get to town meeting, you're citizens. I mean, you can change anything you want on town meeting floor. I mean, I don't know, I don't think any kind of bylaw can restrict you from you know, from making an amendment or changing. Well, then we should it. have we should have the but, the but, it already written up, and us. If, uh, voting, if you desire voting, to, yeah. Voting I guess, in the public. I just I mean, wanna, by the 17th, yeah. that we want to increase it. Yeah. And I, then, if we do. Right. If we do. And, and and have that amendment already drafted for the 29th. Then. I know we keep, I, I, I keep hearing the, the comment, yeah. but it's part of the yeah. complete streets. Yeah. 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 I just, yeah. I really yeah. want the, the complete streets thing so that we can, but, as so I've said this a million times. The $40,000 or whatever gets changed to is not just for designing the common. No, 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 it's not. It's it's mainly to do the yeah. side work, right. sidewalk work and right away work so that I can figure out where the crosswalks are and that way eventually once that's right. done then I'll know where we can redo the paths right. on the common cuz right. the paths are horrible and I you know that shouldn't be that much but I just don't want to do anything on the common well, until we know what's going on right with the crosswalks. Did it, 
wasn't that many years ago, wasn't it someone from the Conway School, School of Landscape? Landscape. Did, did uh, yeah, that, have all that. that up? We you have, have that. I have that. Yes. I have the one that they, right. that they did in 88. Mm -hmm. But that's not good enough to see where, you know. No, because, because they didn't do the street stuff. Okay. Uh, they didn't do the street, they just did the common, the kind of ideas for the common, common. but they have ideas yeah. of, you know, Leary Lot being a park, yeah. and then, but we'd yeah. probably need that right. for parking. Th those are, so. they're more like artist renderings, yeah. they're, yeah. they're ideas, okay. they're yeah. not necessarily engineered drawings, so no. part of the, the thing that we are missing now, I mean, again, we, we have the opportunity to get Complete Streets money up to, I think, 450, so we talked about having 10% of that, or, you know, 40, right. 400. That's how we came up with we the 40, We may end right. up getting, you know, Sunderland, I think, got 280 list this time for Complete Streets, other towns have gotten less, than, you know, so we might get something in, on the neighborhood of 280 or 300 right. and maybe only need 28 to 30. But what we're missing right now is if we wanted to integrate the common you know, engineering at the same time we were doing so the complete streets, we more don't efficient. have that for the common that's unless I like i said we don't if we got yeah. funded at the full amount for complete street so it would be ideal to have a little because bit more because it's you know to integrate it's it. two birds with one stone kind of thing it's all in one shot versus like okay we do the sidewalks and then now we got to get another person to do the whole thing in the middle i just wanted to kind of go Nothing major, just where they are, so I don't make a How mistake and redo something. Yeah. I mean, we could right. just redo the and passes do, are there, but they don't I, well, go they do, anywhere. Well, they, I think that that's beg we have to be careful about we can just redo the paths because once we, re we, I mean, we have to think about accessibility. I don't, that's maybe we key. can just redo them, we but could, I don't know. We need to make sure. But it's not the smart sure. way to do it. Right, and if Correct. we start redoing things, yes, it, we want to make yeah, them try to make them You're money because you're going to sell, and all of a sudden they move the crosswalk, and you're like, your right. path okay. goes the wrong one. Right. I, I just want to do it all, you know, at least the plan in one shot and whether it takes four years to implement it, we don't have the money, whatever. I just want to get a plan for forward, how to fix those pathways. I, I would rather have us um, increase it as an amendment versus going to the, say we get the money, but it's not quite enough and we have to go to the finance committee for a reserve transfer. We'd yeah. be doing it at the beginning of the year. It's, it's one thing really to ask for a, a reserve transfer at the end of the year. Clearly we're gonna make it, nothing's really happened. Well, plus, but I hate to ask it's for It's anticipated money. Right, it's too. To be right. This is anticipated that right. we think, and we have an email from the guy saying it's probably gonna be around 55, so. Well, he said 95, but we winnowed down. But we winnowed down what stuff. we want to make it He gave us a lot of efficient. right away and permitting work that we think we're going to be able to work with DOT on and get yeah. some of that. But the other engineering stuff is straight up, you yeah. know, we, we could need. So that's the only oh, thing yeah, I would well, make so a motion was, on town floor. Uh, Weston and Sampson? Uh, uh, time, time bond. bond. Oh, I'm, I'm, that's yep. what I meant. Yep. <laughs> I, that is what I meant. Okay. <laughs> yep. Um, so do you want a motion now? I mean, I can make the motion on town floor. I don't. That's I. I don't. Unless you well, guys yeah. want to support I, it, I, kind of I thing think or, I, I think we should have it all written up so okay. that we just hand it to. Um, Let me Dan. check into whether how we need to change the capital plan and if okay. we do need if to. If we do need to or we'll, not, that's then we can vote it next for the week April or whatever. The, yeah. the warrant, we're not putting a sum of money. We're just putting we're right. Not, you know, so yeah. right. Yeah. Well, we can do it at the April 17th meeting. I just but I, but I, I just think it should be all written up. and we've already agreed upon it. To do that that night yeah. is just too on much. April 16th. Don't forget, you've agreed to have a finance a joint meeting with the finance committee yes. again. So yep. my I, my thought is that because your warn is um, different than what I'm used to, and that you don't have sums of money, which it ha I mean, you don't have the actual amounts of money, which is. Um, every community I've ever worked in, we've always put those as much as we know in the warrant. Mm -hmm. And Brenda and I talked about next year. We would like to try I don't to do mind. That. Why yeah. this year. Well, this year um, because that's how we've always done it. For we've a long done time. the article and then in the motion. Yeah, in the motion that people so, get that night because we may change it yes. as it gets. And I close, think I told but. you, Kip, it has been a relief for me a little bit this year because it's allowed me more time to put the motions and stuff together. Right, um, and, and not them. have to have the budget set. You know, tight. Right, because the article's so. got to be done a lot sooner than the motions yes, because exactly. Barb's got to get it out. Exactly. But my idea, because I do feel it is important for the constituents to see it as soon as possible, is on yeah. April 16th, when you have your joint meeting, I plan to have the motion packet Great. available and hopefully Perfect. a final draft that you and the Finance Committee can okay. both review. Yep. And that will have get all it out your money and, all your, yep. and then we'll be able to publish it you know, Perfect. after that. So. 
That's great. I just wanted to let you know that. All right. So that's the. Uh, right, that was the. We all set meeting. with that. Yep, I think we're yeah. good. Okay. Yeah. I'll set with that. Do you feel like that you got enough? You're okay with everything? Yeah. I'm, okay. Yeah, I mean, we pretty much talked about it last night. Yeah. That's review and vote. All good. So, town meeting article. So, and so we did. I mean, we went by it, but we did finish all the finance committee recommendations. Yes. That we're aware. Of. I okay. think so. I think you reviewed everything. Okay. Yeah. And as I said, will you, the finance committee will, I think, once they get the motion packet, will make their, um, you know, will will incorporate their formal recommendations into that, you know, packet, and I'll work with them to make sure we have you know, all of those accurate. Okay. Um, so do you want to? The next item is review and vote up, update to the hazardous okay. hazard mitigation oh, yes. action grant okay. process. This is a situation. The due date is tomorrow, and the grant is not going to be done because we need more documentation. But what happened, I, we stopped Ty and Bond from spending any more money. The next round is August. And what I wanted you all to do is, is vote to continue to have him um, the you know, do the application. And, and the, the reason why we stopped is because majority of the project truly is dredging. But the dredging is not eligible for the um, mitigation money per se. What you have to do is you have to change the grant to do stormwater alternative. You have to do all this other <laughs> kind of stuff. Um, so what happened is I called Pat Carnivali because it's ongoing versus reoccurrence. They will pay for reoccurrence, but they won't pay for ongoing. So it's gotten to the point that it's so bad that an inch or two rain, which is a two to five year storm, triggers the flooding. So um, it's, and it's about a 550 acre area that we're talking about. And so anyway, I called Pat Carnivali, who was in charge of Region 2, MEMA when I declared the emergency in, uh, landslide in November of 2011. He had been up, he came up and toured it with me then. He's been up multiple times. He's now, uh, you know, I don't know, much higher up. He's on the governor's place. But I called him for advice on who I should contact. So he's told me to call Sarah White at MEMA and um, she's the head of the program. So I called her and she remembered me from the hazardous mitigation grant that we got on Little Meadow Road by the sewer, old Deerfield sewer treatment plant, that 800 and something thousand. And the reason why she remembered me, because I went down and visited her to, to you know, to finish the grant to make sure we were successful. So, she, which was really, I guess, unusual. She normally doesn't have people show up. So anyway, in the course of the conversation, we were talking about how do we schmooze the grant to make sure that we would get the money and she said she couldn't come up and work with us, but she was willing to work with us um, for the August grant she, deadline. She just couldn't make it up for tomorrow's deadline. Okay. And when I was working with um, Zach from Tie and Bond, the documentation, and we got a wonderful letter from Richardson's Candy Kitchen, but Nancy Sadowski hasn't um, submitted um, her letter yet from the Deerfield Country Store. And we've got to get pumping records for all the sewer, you know, septic systems along Wapping Road. And I mean, just a ton of stuff. So what I wanted you guys to um, support before we spent any more money um, is, is just, are you okay with us applying, going forward and applying for the August grant, working with Sarah and, and trying to, you know, submit it? Makes sense. Yeah, makes sense to me. Okay. I just right. didn't want to spend, have Zach spend any more money or any more time because Zach the whole being the, the engineer. The engineer. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so there's a lot the more work to do. The question for me is, is how much more money will it cost to have Zach do the, the application and what are the, oh, what, no, what's we've the already likelihood? Appropriated the money. What's the likelihood that we're actually going to get anything after we spend all that money? 
Well, so let me, can I just answer? Yeah. So we have, so we have budget, I think we had the, we appropriated 20, or actually we ended up getting it from the reserve fund, if I remember, that was the one we were gonna vote at town meeting. Because we were short of time. We right. short of time. I remember so, that. so we ended up spending um, on the hy hydrology and, and getting up to this point, short of the grant application, about $11,000. Okay. The application itself would cost $6,800. So we told them, you know, stop right now because MEMA had already indicated that, what Carolyn said, because it was ongoing as opposed to recurring. They weren't interested. They needed, there's a cost benefit analysis that has to be done as part of the application mm -hmm. and you we can we can maybe prove it out but we just need more documentation we need to bend that curve more, time. more to the expense well side and, and 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 we have to what it is MEMA has now everything is plugged into a computer program and right. there's no computer program for a loss of value of the failed septics not houses become uninhabitable and no alternative so right. we need pumping records and then we need right. We take assessor's records. It's right. basically stuff that I have to do, and then he puts the application together. Right. Um, and so we're just basically asking to just hold that money, and we want to instead of putting it in tomorrow, we want to put Wait it in and put in August. It in. That's but fine. basically the same. Same thing. It's the same, same thing. thing. Okay. I I think Sarah. Story you know, better. Sarah worked with us for the other one, mm -hmm. and we got it. Yeah. Right. You know, she took yeah. our raw figures right. and yeah, the there information. Yeah, there I isn't, have. like Carolyn's saying, there isn't, a, there isn't necessarily a category for your costs. Right. So we right. have to come up with the costs and sort of categorize them where they need to be. You have to, to build be. your story. Right. You have to build your story, and this will give you time to do that for us. Yeah. yeah. I'm fine with did, that. And, the, and the, what, if we get the grant, then the 6800 is reimbursable under right. the grant anyway. Right. Exactly. But I didn't want us to front the money. And right. not be up front that this right. we were going to apply for the August. We're just right. not going to. We had not enough time. We thought we it knew was, it was right. short. We but it we, was. We didn't not, feel we would be competitive this time, so we right. wanted. We did right. want to okay. spend the money. Right. Okay. So moving on. So we'll okay. we're okay with it. Good. So okay. 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 Thank All you. Right. Good. That's All fine. Right. <clears throat> we'll keep working on it because I we've got to solve this problem. Yep. Uh, the next item on our agenda is building commissioner appointment. So you, know, you guys want to take care? Sure. Yeah, so I had I actually had put that on because as last week um, during the meeting you um, had allowed myself and Trevor to, uh, or you had told me to contact the candidate mm -hmm. and Trevor and I interviewed a candidate this week. So we, um, I think, are interested in making an offer. Um, but when, when we are looking, when I'm looking at the grade um, and what, sort of seems to be the competitive going rate for building commissioners. And I don't necessarily, I mean, we do have a person who I think we have a sense of what this person is gonna want for a salary um, because of where they've been and where other offers um, have been made. Um, I think that we should consider regrading the position. It's currently graded at a grade five, <clears throat> which puts it in with your assistant EMS director, your um, chief operator, your health agent, your library director, and your town accountant. I would suggest, um, based on, I looked at the tool today quickly, based on the job that we had put out, and because of the supervisory skills, the judgment and initiative, the confidentiality, the, the physical environment they have to work in, working in the field and in the office, the hours, um, that we could put it into a grade six, which is where your other public safety officials are, your police chief and your superintendent or your DPW superintendent, um, your town clerk, treasurer, collectors there as well. So I know there is a process for that, but I just mm -hmm. wanted to suggest that you consider that. I've spoken to those department heads that are in the same grade just out of courtesy to those department heads because I think that it's important mm -hmm. to have you know, transparency, um, except for the EMS director. And they all, um, you know, recognize that that position, uh, what the value of that position is and that it is a competitive market. So, um, and then with the experience that the gentleman has, again, working with the, um, through the proper channels to make sure. But I think we could get closer to making a competitive offer. But I don't think right now We're that we ready. can make one. Right. I don't. I We're look at our, what we have, what we've been using for a grade and the salary. I don't think we we don't have anybody. What, when that does we the person when does the personnel committee meet again? They're we meeting the on um, the. I'm actually meeting with them on the 16th. Oh, they're meeting halfway through the month this time. Yep, they're oh, meeting. Okay. Well, they we're going to meet. They normally meet Monday, but it was a holiday, so well, they're then, meeting on the 16th. Then, um, I would so. guess that we would. So that's what, what I. What time I mean, is that's, that? At five on yes. the 16th. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
we'd have to. Yeah. And I and again, I have a great. We have a grading that. tool that we used um, when we did the assistant TA, and that's I used the same thing and looked at it. And I mean, it. it I mean, it seems pretty clear to me. And you guys, of course, can do it yourselves as well. It's pretty straightforward. No, I get that. Yeah. Um, but. Um, so, and then based on, you know, we don't have to rush at this. So I know we have, um, we have to get moving, but um, at least the candidate languish. we're thinking, we right, we right. can't we languish, can't but languish. the candidate we're looking at can't start right away anyways. Um, so there's no need to appoint anybody tonight. I just want to continue that conversation and work right. towards this and keep bringing it back to us until we... I put the I put it on is as appointment job still just posted? because I I wanted yes the job is still posted but I okay. just wanted to um, you know just just let you know we do I mean we have a we have an acting commissioner who has basically told us that he is unable to fulfill the responsibility anymore so as your chief well you guys are the chief administrative officers I, perhaps I'm not but in the statute it requires you to ensure that you do have somebody so I just you know right. that's what I'm saying and, you can't languish and, and the problem I've had with this and I've, I've seen it coming just like everything else and that's why I hate doing kicking this can is that here's the scenario guys building a house on hillside road he calls for the building inspector come down there's nobody to show up he goes ahead and he does it sells the house next year somebody buys the house and you know, part of it starts falling down. What do you mean it's falling? Then no, he didn't put any headers in there. Well, where was the building inspector? Well, we didn't have one. Do we have what? that case happening right now? Somebody's yes. building a house without a permit? No. Without but, an inspection? No. Okay. But what I'm saying is that if somebody calls yeah. tomorrow morning for an inspection, well, we, we have nobody to do that. We have so, an, somebody doing that right now that we're paying. Who? Dick Kalaszewski oh, right no, now he's is our already, building inspector. He's already burned up his hours this week. He's not working tomorrow or Friday. That's so, fine. Then we'll, we'll meet him then on Monday. Your I mean, 48 that's, hours that's is the up, place though. we're in. Three months ago, um, you told me there wasn't enough work and that Dick could do this and we needed to appoint him. No, no I never so said there was not enough work. Yes, but. you did. No. I have it on I tape. No. But anyways, no. yes, it was Dick. to hire him back because we didn't have much work. So anyways, I agree that we're in, we're in a tight spot right now. Mm -hmm. The only other option is to go to FERCOG or post again. Well, or, we're already posted. We're, posted. we're out posted. there. We're, we're still well, posted. I was asked to post it again. So <laughs> all I'm saying is that I'll take any application right now. We're working towards one opportunity, which I think might be a good choice. But it's yep. going to take a little bit yeah. of time to do that. I don't feel comfortable yeah. appointing or making an offer right. tonight without working through but personnel you, board and right. some okay. other stuff. I guess that's the question though. Do you, is that what I'm saying? Just in terms of the competitiveness of the position, um, do you feel that there's merit to what I'm saying and should I proceed along mm -hmm. those lines I'm asking you? That's my thought, but I don't know. I, I can't speak for the personnel board. I, I don't think that it needs to go up to the grade six, um, but. Yeah, but how well, you wouldn't be able to say that without looking at the job description and looking at the grading tool. I know the job description. I know that job. I dream that job. Well, I understand you know, you know just, but you don't know what the grading tool says, and, and, it's in, and it's in context with all the other jobs that have been looked at and graded. So I think I understand what you're saying, Kip, yeah. but I think that, you know, if you would just, if you looked at it, then, then I could see if you said no, but I think you should at least okay. you know, take a look. All right. The next item. New yeah, business. But, uh, Dougie, you need a decision. Right? I'd like to. You don't. I don't think you necessarily need no, to vote, no, but no, I would vote. like you to give me some direction. Should I well, ask to put this on the personnel I, board I agenda? Sure. Should I do agenda, something? We, were, we aren't going to have. If if it doesn't go on the personnel agenda, then you can't it, at least have the dialogue. They can't have that discussion for the seventeenth, mm -hmm. even. Right. So mm -hmm. you put it on, and whether we pull it last minute or whatever at least it's on there to begin with so that no we should we have move. personnel okay. discuss it okay i will see bring, what I'll happens send them the job description in the, the meantime tool and still ask them look at review how we can okay. thank you afford a building commissioner thank you um next item under new business is an update for assistant town administrator planner office yes. official 
So I just, I, I the, those applications were due, or uh, it's still, the ad is still posted and we're still okay. accepting, it's rolling, but, okay. but we did have a, um, we were gonna start the review on March 27th, so I've compiled the applications. We had 18 and actually just got two more, so I believe we're up to 20. Wow. Um, not, you know, I haven't, that's just yeah, the first. Yeah, that's just the raw Yeah, the data. first raw data, so. Um, Do any we, of them have building experience? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know I'm yet. not telling you yet. <laughs> um, but it maybe looks like some real line. good quality, yeah, quality um, folks so, or qualified folks. So I'm um, going to, uh, I've created a file and I will, I will create a, you know, a document, a scanned document. And I'd like to, I was, had originally had asked Barbara Hancock and uh, John Waite to be on a, a small committee for my building commissioner hiring. But since that's not happening at this moment. I'd like to use them for my ATA, if that's okay with you all. Can I, I or how so do you want me to proceed after I, I get the applications I think that's vetted? Fine. That's fine. Other? John will be back, I think, April 8th. I just think they're both gonna have interaction with this with this position I being the land mean. use planning and mm -hmm. and we are looking at somebody that's gonna need to follow regulations and, and rules, I think, you know, Barb would be a great person to, to sit with that, and I think John, you know, having that experience of land use planning would be good. Sure. They both okay they both that. agreed or offered. So. Yep. That's thank okay. you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Uh, next item is a request for fiscal year 19 pay adjustment for the acting building commissioner. Um, did you all see that uh, email from John? Mm -hmm. And I, did, I'm perfectly comfortable with it. I'm good with it. You, Trevor? I thought. Well, can I think we should probably describe it for the public yeah. what you're discussing? Oh, sure. Go ahead. So, I I don't know exactly know what the impetus, but you had asked for information on whether you could give a some type of pay adjustment to the acting building commissioner slash health agent who is uh, restricted in what they are allowed to make through the retirement right. system. Correct. And I and think you have been working a ton. Right, and who has hours. been working many Since more hours August. than that. Um, yeah. And so you did find out that while you can't do it through traditional wages, you can do it through some type of bonus or stipend. some type of stipend. And so stipend. I would an summarize, adjustment. and I think up to the amount of $9,000 was considered. So you do have money in the budget, um, in that budget, if that was something that you wanted to consider. Well, there, there was something about a, a dollar amount because of... Well, there's a cap. The maximum getting, get, there's of the a cap retirement, and, that's right. And it, and it was... It, it's kind of vague, and we didn't want to oh. pay where they would end up having to pay back the retirement. So yes, we wanted yes, to keep I it gotcha. under that. Um, you know, do you think? Well, he's been he's been working twenty or so, or more hours since August. Do you think he would see this as an insult? I don't. I don't. Know. Well. I, I think, well, I can inform you, the conversation that I had with him is that it didn't make much sense to, to give him money where he's just going to have to turn around and give it to the retirement people oh, no. and pay taxes on it on top. So mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, John's suggestion might be 8000 and that way there, it gives room for oh, where well, it's not going to trigger Well, it's because in July... He gets a little bit of a raise on his right and, board and of it, health hours. Right, but no. what's uh, here again? Same scenario. Why give you know? Why get a raise if you just go turn around, and give it back, and and pay tax on it too? So, and I think I, as of July first, you know, we, we we should solve this issue in terms of the hours and the allocation. Right now, it's well, been I, very I, you know, it's going it's, back and forth, and it's not it's not really a genuine reflection of the positions, the oh, job, no, the hours, all. or anything. So, I mean, you're basically putting together records that say this is happening, and and yep. and you know, I'm I think I'm now signing them. I don't know if you guys, I think I'm signing them, but they're not really. That's not really what's actually happening, and that's right. not right. He's not right. working a lot more. Yeah, and yes, and and also it's just well, not yes, in that certain, way. He has it's all huge it's responsibilities, not, you know. so, and he's on. He's he's responding on weekends, okay. and and yeah. So well, that's another thing. I mean, while we're talking about this, I mm -hmm. think that uh, you know, I also learned that you know, and it's not very frequently, but from time to time, the building inspector is called out in the middle of the night because mm -hmm. if there's a fire, they have to make sure the building's secure and stuff like that, and. I found out that they haven't been paid for this. And I think it should be just like any police or fireman, I, I, I think that there should be a minimum of two or three hours paid 
to these people get, who get up in the well, middle of the night. Well, they're exempt employees. So that's what I'm saying right. about this. Yeah. That's why exactly yeah. what I just said. Thank yeah. you, Kip. Yes, exactly what I just said. When you look yeah. at the grade, you will see the physical environment and the conditions of right. employment for public safety officials are different requirements and, than... Right. And you can throw this out so. to, as our current DPW superintendent also comes out in the middle of the night and right. Kevin is on right. always hours right. and he gets right. paid for on it. the that's weekends right. Right. But, all the but, time Kevin's responding that's right and Kevin's exempt as well and we're right. having so these dialogues amongst our payroll staff and yep. myself among the the is it fair to them is it fair among the equity issue among the compensatory it time issue you don't have a right. compensatory time policy right. those Correct. folks are technically but, exempt but like so with, you start doing those things yeah you're well, setting like, I, I, Kevin Kevin definitely goes out a lot more oh. than the building inspector. The building inspector, I mean, it, it, no, if I it's guess. You're not three times a year, that. that's it. But there could but, be times. Right. Oh, it's early mornings. I mean, when that house fell out. down, I mean, yeah. he was there early. Yeah. 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 Dick was there many times. motion for the stipends or whatever. Yes. However you want to word it. Well. Is there a way that we want to structure it other than this, or is it just a one flat That seemed to be the best way. I mean, I asked John to look into it, and he got in touch contact with the people this at is the, the way you retirement can, board yeah and back and like forth this. through the retirement board yeah. so i think we just want to verify with susan bobe like what how exactly we would want to pay it out mm -hmm. um, it, but i think I, you're voting to to give an additional you know a right. bonus or a uh, no stipend. stipend or however you want to stipend for additional um, responsibility rocky sure um, hey, wouldn't we still have to report that to the irs Oh yes. 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 Oh yes. But it won't. Yes, yes. But it won't mess up his retirement. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a retirement right. thing. Because you and that's why the dollar amount was so important that that we checked into how much he's allowed to make and how much did he make and will he make? Yeah, that he's know, making way that under. I understood. Yeah. That I was, and that and that's yeah. why and it was eight thousand, which is not reflecting of. Right. He and, wasn't planning to come back and do yeah, any of this work. And you're right. He wouldn't pay tax on that. Yes. But the other way is. Not only he'd have to give it back to the people, but he'd have to pay tax on it yeah. too. So, right, yeah. and and he's you know was never planning to do all this work. He planned right. to retire off into the sunset, and well, he wind, we dragged him well somewhat sunset, yeah. but um, we, you know we dragged him back for the help, and he's been doing a whole lot more work than we expected and he expected, and um, he's here early and late, and um, and so you know politically it's it's you know. I don't want all over town. This man got a bonus. Whoa, well, dear, feels throwing up. It's Stipen. not a bonus. Stipen. 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 It's it's well. paying somebody for the work that they've completed and and that we hadn't planned on paying him that he ended up having to work. It's a weird situation, but well, it, but it goes back to the point it, I was trying to make before. You know, he's been covering the town and doing important stuff for the town. I mean, correct. since August today, I August. was there and since he August. had four. He had to go out on four, four different inspections, calls. and I gave him a hard time. I said, "Look at you know." He, Yes, so I agree. Anyways, so, so I I would make that motion to make sure that um, Diana double checks. Right. The but way is. I think it, you know, for eight thousand or eighty five hundred, whatever we will work out so it's under his. Thing. It's in our budget. budget. It's budgeted budget. already, it's but his. it's just yeah. you know right. wasn't allotted to him. But he ended up doing all the work, and we'd yes. like to pay him for that. You want yes. second that. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next item, town administrator weekly project update. I didn't know you had weekly projects. I do. Have, I have a weekly report that I've been giving you every week. Oh, I, I understand that, but I didn't know about you had weekly projects. Oh, no, just I just I thought I put project, would I put project yes. update? Oh, project, weekly and project updates. Yeah, Great. project updates. Sounds good. So annual town report is completed. Um, it's right, getting ready to go to print. I don't. I put a thing of when it will be electronic. Uh, I'll check with Pat and find out uh, when it will be electronic. Do you tell me who's going to print it and what type of? Is it going to be a, a, a glossy type paper cover or is it going to be the staples type thing that's just stamped together? No, it's going to be well. The one that we we did something. I mean, I think Pat was just planning to get the same thing we'd done last year, which ends okay. up being an eight and a half and eleven book. Yep. Um, it's got a glossy cover, okay. and um, we printed last year a little over three hundred of them, and that about was the exact right amount. Mm -hmm. If you yeah, looked at the boxes in the front, yep. there was only like two left of the last two years, so she's got it spot on in terms of the the amount. The and um, and then we put it, we do it electronically and put it on the website as well, so if people. Sure. 
don't want to take a copy, a printed okay. copy. But we do look, we, we bid last year, when I was here doing special projects, we got three quotes. Um, we, went to, we, we went to the cheapest uh, yep. company. Okay. So. They, they seem to, they do it. We're not winning yeah. any awards at MMA. No. You yeah, should see not. some of those reports. We, you go out there and they have got like, yeah. oh, man, it, it looks like yeah. a shutterfly. Not fly. yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> we have got some ideas. We we, Pat and I talked about this last year. We'd love, we'd love, love to get to do that. To a we, really nice, you know, really nice cool. report for people. I think but. it's important okay, if you... The 350th, the 350th bingo. That That's a good idea, sure. Rocky. But, but I think we should also be building up to it's, it it's, so that we can win on the 300th. If you're going to, I feel really strongly, if you're going to print them, that they, even if you only do 300 copies, if they're useful at least. Yes, like useful. I like the ones that have those bound things so you can kind of move them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can Instead fold them over, like thin, those yeah. round binds. And the little books, which you can put directories in. And right. I know you can get it all online now, yeah. but I just, I like the little, you know, so we've talked about changing it up in, in coming Next years. Year. But, yep. you know, this year's been super well, busy. Well, you need to look at the winners. Yeah, and then, so look at the examples. That's a nice one. Because right. we, we were really impressed. And we did really well a few years ago. We were working up to it. Yeah. And then when we hit the census, we got bumped up to the next, we're the over 5,000. Oh. So, because we were getting close, close to winning our group under 5,000, but now we're over 5,000 and we're competing in the 5,000 to 10,000 group. That's a tougher category. So people who budget, tougher category. budget $10,000 for their annual report. <laughs> No, they it's, it's really, I think it, it's not so much the printing or the producing. It's the work that goes it's into the it. It's the time. The mouth that Pat puts into it, write. even just in what we do, I know. Is, is a lot. Yeah. It is a lot to well, format they have, that They have stuff. a person that is just, that's what they're assigned. Yeah, yeah exactly, publisher. right. They have a so we're well, going to have I mean, a hard have time assistant. winning against that. Yeah, when you when we have an assistant again, I think we definitely could be in a position to have time what, to do that. What makes the difference is to have... If you look at all the winners, the, and they are online mm -hmm. at the MMA, is they have pictures. And so yeah. what we need to do is consci conscientiously collect oh, pictures yes. from the community yes. all year round. Yes. You know, like the tree lighting or, yep. the, yes. you know, the different the Memorial Day. You go on Deerfield now, they're posting them all the time, the wildlife in town. Yeah. yeah. All the events. Well, you need to pull yeah, yeah. some of those yeah, pictures so we, off we just of that. Pull those that. off. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because sure. people are yep. posting good things. They and, are. And they post they love pretty their nature community. pictures of the town. Yep. Like in the spring or the winter. And so yep. those things, you need to be collecting them. Um, That's a good idea. Yeah, all year all round. All year round. We need to. Yep. Yeah. Start now. Okay. Um, okay. So just, I don't know if there's anything, um, body art regulations, I mean, Board of Health regulations, we're going to be doing vaping. Uh, tobacco flavors and body art, those are all in the works. Mm -hmm. Those are getting drafted. Regulations, public hearings to be coming. Um, green communities, we're moving forward. We we did, you you did the mm -hmm. um, uh, contract. We're prepare, I'm preparing, or you did the award yeah. for the bid. I'm doing the contract and notice to proceed. We are working through the rebate. You might remember because mm -hmm. it's green communities, we actually money-wise have less money than what the what the um, project cost was because some of that is a utility rebate. So mm -hmm. right now we're working with the vendor and uh, Berkshire Gas to get the exact amount of that rebate so we know what the dollar amount will be. Mm -hmm. Will that contract. come before the fiscal year ends? Probably oh, absolutely, not. yeah, like in the next d couple days. Oh, oh yeah, okay. we have to finish this project by the end of May. So we're, okay. we're working on this every I just, day. I just yeah. wanted to make sure that it was um, done by June 30th so it comes in under... Oh yeah, no, no. That it's we're, I, okay. I was hoping the the installation is going to be done by the end of the month. That's still my goal. That's why every day I'm we're really pushing, you know, pushing this along. So, um, MVP, as Carolyn said, we're going to yep. have a working group meeting mm -hmm. on Friday. We're continuing with that. Uh, Chris Curtis will be here on the 17th to prevent, uh, present his MVP round three grant that he wants to uh, put in, as, as Carolyn said, um, this next, uh, it's actually due April uh, 19th. 19th, so yes. For the culvert and some other initiatives we want to do on our climate resiliency 2030 plan. Well, we want, to, we want to start getting some more money for other things besides culvert replacement because yeah. if we only put in for culvert replacement, we might... Pretty soon they're going to shut us off. Yeah. 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 So we've got to look like we're doing other things. Yeah, yeah. Which we want to do anyway. There's so much to do. Yeah, yeah the so idea much is to do. When, yeah. when we're on TV, we've got to look like we're doing no, something. No, we, <laughs> we are doing, doing other things. We are Part doing other things. Part of the initiative is education and we're going to do that. To yeah. make the, 
Yeah. I think we're like money or not. I understand that you just should phrase it differently. Right. <laughs> well, I think what, what yeah, Carolyn, Carolyn we felt that. really strongly that we needed to go after the action, you know, to, to do infrastructure. And she's right, because we had uh, all these absolutely. problems. I, but but now we realize we need to step back and we need to educate people on climate resiliency. Well, we're going to have and, green infrastructure. You know, green infrastructure, infrastructure stuff. Plan for, for, exactly. for Deerfield. So guess what? It sounds really good. But what are we doing? Replacing culverts. Right. Yeah. So, right. but you got to make it. You got to broaden it. Story. Yeah, we got to broaden it. So. And and oh, um, for the MVP, we're we're going to focus out here on Kelleher Drive. Is that all right with both of you? In case you're not there in the meeting on Friday. You're going to what? For the, the next the culvert. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, for the fine. July mm -hmm. yep. Yep. round, the next round, because we're doing Mill Village first. Right, right. But the next round, remember we yeah, had updated the plan. Yeah, that was in bad shape plane. up there. Plan, and we're going to now do Kelleher Drive. The one that it? goes under Kelleher Drive. Yes. Or the one that goes under. The no, main. the one that goes under Kelleher Drive. Okay. Is, which is already that's already collapsing. collapsing. Okay. So that's going to be the next. That's going to be the July submission, as long as it's okay with you guys going forward. Okay. No problem. So All right. Yeah. Too bad you couldn't dig out the ditch behind yeah. the houses oh, on landfill. Kelleher. We're working still on that. Landfill. We are scheduling a conference call. Oh, they're still that. talking about okay. I, I that's didn't good. see anything in here about that. How come? Because <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> <Sorry. laughs> there's not. <laughs> we are hiring. George moved out. See the collapse here. But late. we have an idea to hire somebody. Imagine if we had. MVP for seven hours. Okay. All right. What are you guys talking about down there? I don't know if I can hear you or the public. We were talking about the Mosquito District. Okay. Stop that. Um, <laughs> no, okay, we're, so gonna, we're, we're moving forward with the Mosquito District. I know. Perfect. Solar development on the landfill, yes. We are scheduling a conference call. We are just awaiting to get some updates on the SMART program because we have two, two finalists and basically no uh, way to sort of evaluate them based on their proposal because we are, the SMART program is fully subscribed. So we're still, we yep. are sort of waiting for some indications on that and getting some questions answered from them. So we're moving it along incrementally. Are, are the proposals... Are we going to lease it or are we going to own it? We are not. Uh, are we just well, we, leasing well, the land? Course, to well, the... of course we're going to own it because it's the landfill. So we're never going to not own the landfill. Yes. I, I understand the <laughs> land. I meant the solar array. Are we so, just going to we're lease? Gonna, no, yes. We're going to lease no, it. No, yes. Yes. <laughs> we're going to own the land Golly, underneath. No, yeah. no, you know Under, I'm going it is getting away. <laughs> We're going to, oh, I'm sorry, Kim. Late. Yes, we are going to lease it. We are not going to own the You're solar. Right. Array. right. So Good. somebody else is going to build it. They're going to maintain it. They're going to do all the paperwork. The They're just going to send us a check. We are yep. going, to, yes, we are Thank going you. to have a contract yep. with them for all of that, which you just said. Good. Yes. Good, good, good. Okay. Town Buildings Advisory Committee, they had a great meeting within the last couple of week, weeks, Carolyn went, and they are, as I've said last before, and have uh, even gotten more information on uh, putting together an RFQ for the building assessment and they're putting together we're working on doing a town-wide survey that may be wider than just buildings um, okay. so we're, I'm working with them on that uh, wastewater treatment so next steps as we mentioned we're having the workshop meeting at in the morning on Monday and then on the 17th which is two weeks from today you're having a a public meeting um, with DPC to be here to talk again about the project. Yes. Um, on the 17th, at the same uh, on that same night, we I am having Lisa White and Christina Johnson come to talk about the age-friendly designation for the town, and we also want to talk to you about um, the either reigniting the Council on Aging or uh, talking about creating a senior advisory committee or something that we can start to have an advocacy group for the seniors of this town that can Perfect. really start to work. And I've talked to both Sherry and Brian and Tom, actually all three of them, about the, or Sherry and Tom, uh, Sherry and Brian, the other administrators in our shared communities, we're going to have a meeting and we're talking about you know them also doing the same and then trying to come together all of the senior yeah, groups and there's definitely a need and it can't just be about the center Deerfield seniors yeah. have needs that are just that aren't just the senior center right. so yeah. that's what Thank we need you. to Thank talk before about. before you go to for yes. as we're talking about um, the, the sewer thing I, I spoke with uh, Josh Mel and he oh, offered to oh, yes. help yes. Diana uh, he'll draft the technical language for an RFQ awesome. and I'm going to try to get that you know, by uh, probably Tuesday, Wednesday at the latest. So hopefully we can get, how soon do you think you, if you get that type of information, is there something that could be done in a week? 
Well, to put together the requirements of the RFQ, oh no, I'd probably need a little more time than that, Kip. I need to review it all, because it's, it's, it's a big project. You're talking about for the big project? No, 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 I'm just, what are you just talking a clarifier. About for the, oh, the clarifier, clarifier for the million yeah. dollars? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it would take me more than a week. I mean, if he gets, it's gonna, isn't it gonna get him, take more than a week for him to do the technicals? <laughs> We're, we're, we'll see, but okay. I mean, I just I want to. I'd like to get this going weeks. as soon as yes. we can. You'd ha uh, we'd you know, have to so do we it. Can get, I think we'd get much better possible. prices if people knew that they could start construction in September. Mm -hmm. You know, instead yep. of waiting till November. I, you know, uh, I think that would be a huge thing. Well, it's huge. Number one, you never want to do construction in the winter if you can. Right, but, but anyway, well, they, well right, right, they, right. these projects take years. So I know, right. but yeah. Yeah. Right. no, I know, but yeah. the big, you know, yeah. Yeah. Right. this is a public works oh, I know, but I mean, if we can so get this, a bunch of rules. I just want you guys, yeah, if we can get want, this out the door I because I want to, know I want to move ahead. I, you know, I think that that would be helpful. I think yeah. it would help Diana, you know, because she could do the technical thing and she could just do all the. Yeah, I can do the form. I'm just saying it's because it's a public works infrastructure project. It just has a ton of hoops and stuff. So I just would want to make sure it would take, and then we'd have to have council review it and all that. Yep. So, so why we're on that, why we're talking about the sewer again, can can somebody put together what that resiliency part is for the meeting on Friday? Yes, I will ask Dave to give me that so that we can so make we, sure. Just, just a paragraph, right? So that we can update the plan, mm -hmm. vote to update the plan, yeah, and then um, yeah, you know sure have it included. out there in the. However, we're going to structure, you know, Deerfield 2030, so that, and that will be like for the July submission. So you plan, I mean, the plan that Dave might be talking about that you could maybe get funding for is just to make the plant more resilient against flooding. Right. Correct. I guess yes. is that, I guess, I, I, I fully, understood I'm is not fully, it. I'm not fully I, well, see, okay. he added on, he added on a million dollars, which is not. It was 800 I, and then adjusted yeah. out. Because it's about, f costs. whenever you do a river bank, it's yep. about 500,000 per yep. thousand feet. Right. So it makes sense if you put a million in, you're probably talking about 1,800 to 2,000 feet, probably. Are right? you, are you um, familiar with what he was talking about? Was it raising a certain amount of feet? Was it tied to, uh, you know, estimated high waters or, or flood levels? Or? I don't know. I couldn't answer that right now. But I believe my... my Interpretation was that you know DEP or what they may require resiliency along there, and I would, my guess I, is that's raising the berms and stuff, and maybe raising I, the walls of the clarifier. I don't know. Well, I, we we had talked about trying to put the raising the walls of the clarifiers or the t any mm -hmm. the tanks that we go to replace as part of a resiliency thing. So we wanted when we build a new tank. So that would be under our right. <laughs> that would be under our. MVP. We could put it under our MVP program, I think. What I what I was going to say is so that we would been, suck that in under the grant. It's been a while, but I think that the, the existing retaining wall is higher than the surrounding land. You know, I don't think it's much, but so if if that river did come up from the, the clarifier, you mean? Right, it would go into the fields. Gotcha. Into Waitley, then Not come so in much. the back door. If right, you will. right. I, I think that's the way it would be. Um, yeah. I, well, the, what you would want to do, I mean, that's part of the resiliency is you, you, have, right. you make sure that there's access to the floodplain that would suck the water off rather than to overtopping. And yes. so, you know, you have, that can be designed in on our property somehow. But I don't know exactly what there's, you're talking uh, we'll about. We'll try to get some answers on that. Yeah, well, we whatever we, we can put there's something in There's quite a bit of land just north of a lot of the bends, like in the Hatfield area, mm -hmm. that, I mean, they would they would probably be, you know, 15, 20 feet underwater before it would come up that high. And that river's pretty straight in that area. It so is. It's, it's when, when you, once you make that first bend, then it goes the other way. That's where it starts to go right. up and over. Yeah. You know, yeah. but I- It I, is pretty I, high. There I, are, I mean, I remember with the Deerfield, when the Deerfield flooded at Irene, I was like, oh, Connecticut must be flooding like crazy. I drove down. No. Yeah, it was fine there, yeah. especially by our It plants. went in and whooshed down. Well, what happened? Because there was no, Connecticut wasn't involved at all. Right. Well, if you, next time you go over the Cheapside Bridge and you head up toward uh, Montague, you can look. There's r rocks on both sides, so that river is really choked down. So when you get a lot of water, you know, that river has to go up really high. Well, once that water starts to go up, then it starts going this way. And it's easier for the water to go into the golf course and into the fields right, right. than it is to go through that rock formation. Yep, you know, yep. So. I see it's I mean. a bottleneck. Yep. 
Okay. Sorry, Diana. So, That's okay. I was nearly done. The only I thing I wanted to mention is I would like to put on the draft complete streets policy, which is um, you've looked at except for the last piece, which oh, was we were, the sort we were of supposed matrix. to vote it today. No, you, we had decided um, April 17th. We okay. Talked about putting I, on, we so. need to do that because yep. May, I, I want right. to do it May before. 22nd is the date. I know. Yep. We want to be able to do it and sign off yep. in April. So if I give it to you, I'll, um, so the only thing we added since the last time you saw it was a little matrix of, um, you know, the measurement piece, which Vinod had recommended. So that would be the only new piece you'd be looking at. And I hope you would vote, consider voting on the 17th. Um, Diana, can you just have a, a draft copy laying yes. around here somewhere in case anyone wants to look at Absolutely, it. Absolutely, yes. Because yes, um, there might be some people I'll put there. In, I'll, I have a depository on the website already with all the complete street stuff, so I'll have Pat update it too, make sure okay. we have the updated one that we're going to look at. Just want in case anyone there. wants to um, look at it. Yeah. Again, as right. part of the story, we have to do it yeah. before May, that's all. Yep. When, okay. uh, let's see, so a couple of things. When was the police appointments did we do that we did, did that, that already the um and appointing the transfer station attendant i saw that in the oh, packet yes. but it's not on the agenda i'm sorry I wasn't yes sure we that was my last that. thing so on my i had up on my report of ongoing that we had been doing the pre-employment stuff for the new transfer station yes. attendant you'd already created the position yes. you'd basically said you know so basically it's all done and now I just, um, you know, we're ready to basically hire the gentleman, and mm -hmm. I don't know if you appoint transfer station attendants or just hire them, but basically I gave you a, a notice that we'd be doing a grade one, step two, 1399 Do we vote hour. to do that? I think we just hire. I think you just hire her. Uh, yeah. I think okay. you, you appoint. We had already you made the position. We already have. We have yes, you create the position. We voted the position. But as far as the person, hire. I think the department heads for that kind of position. Yep. You would appoint all department heads in right, the, right, you know, right, higher right. level positions. But. So that's going to go for Forward so he can work this so Saturday. he wanted to work start training him this weekend I believe okay. yes okay yeah so we'll let him know thank you so much I just want on uh, the 17th there's a FERCOG meeting that I'm supposed to go to but I'm not going to I'm going to come here but I just want to let you know that what was the FERCOG meeting? I don't know whatever those me meetings that we go to I go to oh no those are on right. Wednesday on Wednesday That's those, what are, I got usually on the those are usually Thursday those are usually Thursday I got something that said yeah, it I guess changed, Thursday, Franklin County, uh, it's the FERCA Council meeting. Thursday. 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 It's Thursday. Thursday. You're the wrong day. Nice try. <laughs> you okay. still have to go. Still have to go. It's your last <laughs> one. No, Wait, I'm what just, do you get planned? I, you have to go. No, I, <laughs> You're still our appointed representative with Wednesday. the vote. All right, I'll have to go um, check. Actually, speaking of that, Monday night, I'm planning, well, so I'll be here at 8 a.m., and then on the nighttime, I would like, I'm planning to go to the affordable housing round table. The, there's Franklin County's have at the COG, they're having one. And I know okay. there's been some discussion about affordable housing. I just want to see, I just want to take the temperature. Yeah. What's yeah. Going on? Well, I want to make sure, um, you know, we want to make sure that it's not pushed upon mm -hmm. us in any way, you know, Correct. obviously. Yep. And, well, well, and also I want to hear about what is going on with senior I, Diana, housing. Diana, what we need is but senior exactly. affordable so housing. Senior and housing. Would you please yeah. just yes. talk That's to the what regional I make, housing see what's people going on with and that. say, what exactly. the heck? Yeah. Again, yeah. I, I, I went to a couple of meetings where they talk about affordable housing, and, and I, I don't know, it's just me. I find it very frustrating because everybody wants affordable housing, but yet there's no... I don't think that there's enough. To no, no. I, what I'm saying is, I don't think that there's enough forethought into what the cost of regulations and mm -hmm. building codes right. and other improvements that you want in town, whether it be schools or sewers, stuff like that. All of those have huge impacts on the cost of living, whether people own homes or they rent. You know, and I, I just, I just think too many times it's. Uh, it's it's not really taken into consideration, mm -hmm. and it's like every every little small thing adds up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, and I now that you're going to have some free time, you could. It sounds like a, you would be a great building commissioner, and <laughs> oh, then you, and then you could no, go and no, be on the BDRS, no. and you no. could make the rules for no. the for the building code. And no. I think that's right up no. your alley. We also have warrants. I think that'd be um, we also have warrants <laughs> totaling one million one hundred seventy three thousand six hundred forty nine dollars and 98 cents tonight to sign mm -hmm. I, I would make a good janitor because i love pushing brooms <laughs> i can think about warm weather but you motorcycles. would be qualified to be a building a building, no, or a building inspector. No. i don't have the right temperament <laughs> the last three years hasn't helped you with that 
It's great temperament. <laughs> you haven't noticed all the scars on my tongue, have you? <laughs> Biting it. <laughs> I feel like you've gotten very diplomatic in the last year that I've known you. <laughs> I took it all out on a young guy who sands floors the other day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you recognize it now. <laughs> Any public right. comment? Bruce. No. You don't no. have anything to say? No. Bruce, I was only giving you a hard time. You're really not going to say company? anything? No. All right. God. Oh, man, you're gonna, we're going to get out of here. All right. No, wait, well. All right. I just wanted to find out what that meeting was on Friday there. Okay. Um, if you want to come, it's the Mo uh, Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Corps. Oh, oh that's, that's oh, on oh. our website. Yeah. That's 10 to 12. It's about the farm bill. So if you might want to come, because... Don't nope. We might have an opportunity as a nope. municipality. We don't have anything. Just, we don't have anything. Oh, we're all done. Yeah. From well, we're not done, but we will wait for that. Friday oh, no, they came. They in came. the town hall. We do. We do you didn't tell something. me. I'm so sorry. Is is uh, we're sorry. having a workshop. The conservation district is oh. um, sponsoring or, or is hosting the farm oh. bill um, discussion as to what's available in the farm bill for the next five years. The, Massachusetts gets about twenty million dollars every year to spend. So the idea is to explain the programs and how people are at, um, can access the farm bill. So as a matter of fact, if I was going to give you, because you actually have property. Um, I, don't, I don't need a bill. I need help. Yeah. <laughs> well, you come to the, find out how the pro, what yeah. programs are available. Um, you may want to stuff. Add, you should definitely come, right? Because so you that's farm. 10 o'clock, yeah, 10 to 12 Friday on morning Friday. here at the town hall. The conservation district is explaining um, hosting and our natural resource and conservation service um, explanation of the farm bill programs and how people can access them. Yeah. Well, I, I'll, I'll speak for all farmers in, in the town of Deerfield anyways. If you want farmers to come here, you either do it before 6 a.m. or after 6 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. We're on a rainy day. No, I, it's supposed to be that. rainy. So that's, what, I mean, you know, Kip, it rains for the rainstorm. <laughs> I know. All right. um, Diane, did you have an opportunity to do that charge I for the was, sewers? I was just going to say that. I okay. did not. I'm sorry. Right. I did start it, but I did not complete it. So All right. um, I will definitely put it on. As soon as you get it, the, Bruce, email it to that yes. man right there. Bruce, it's, uh, um, <laughs> okay. it's, it's right here if you're. I'll, I'll, if no. it's really raining hard, I might come. No, because you really got it. Oh. <laughs> Conservation. Here, you can have this. Oh, thanks. You work for them? Kip, do I ever make money? No. I volunteer. I'm the conservation really? chair. Wait a minute. I'm do do chair of the conservation district. Do you do hay? Do I do hay? Yes, I do hay. Good. I own my horse to eat. I know your phone number. And and there's more there have they have another there, there's a workshop in May, I think, right in June. And so we'll be putting um, those on the We got too, the conservation district got a grant for forty two thousand dollars. We're putting on um, at the Deerfield Highway Department May fifth. It's an all-day program on how the rivers act in storms. So we, it's a training for our highway departments, and hopefully our highway department will be all there. Mm -hmm. And it will explain how you anticipate erosion and then tr work on erosion. It's an all-day workshop. Yeah. And then June 5th, um, it, right now it's scheduled here, but it might actually be at the FERCOG because um, the, the river table, it's a better, a dark, it's all dark, and there might be too many um, slides and stuff that people have to participate in. But it's a rivers and road program that Vermont um, put together after Irene, and um, what we're doing is um, having Mass Highway is, is guinea pigging us, the town, the our first workshop is rivers and road crossing. So if there was damage for um, Irene, like an Irene kind of damage, um, the highway departments would know how to repair the work, um, repair the damage. Cool. So it's, it's a training on replacing culverts and stuff. And again, hopefully our highway departments will um, participate and uh, be trained to do culvert replacement. I, I see here you're one of the speakers. This is not going to end at 12, I can tell you that. <laughs> I'm doing the introduction kit. That's it. Okay. Uh, I just learned that we need to go into executive session. So if there's no more public comment, um, we're going to go into executive session uh, pursuant to Mass General Law 6C.
30A, Section 21A, 3, to conduct strategies with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation uh, position of the public body and the chair so declares. I do. So. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Henry Camosa. Aye, Carolyn Neffs. Okay. So we, we will uh, conduct our executive session and end our meeting there. We will not come back to open session. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thank all. You. Have a good night.